Oh, we're live. Isn't that wondrous? Oh, don't you love to see it? Um, hello everybody. If you are watching this in the future, um, uh, on the VOD or whatever, um, you can safely skip ahead 10 minutes or so, because that's how long we're going to be talking about nothing, and then we'll get into the theorizing about 10 minutes from now. That's right, we're talking about theories. Don't, don't, isn't that what you wanted? I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes so that I don't forget that. Because I am prone to forgetting that kind of thing. I'll just get swept up in the moment. Hope everyone's having a good day. Um, I haven't been awake too long. It's fucking freezing over here. But, uh, oh, well, hello everyone. Oh, look at all of you. Hello, my little Chathams. Filling up the chat. Oh, you know what? I need to do the thing where I tell the Discord. Tell everybody. Hi, everyone. Oh, my goodness. There's so many of you. Oh, it's, it's so lovely to see you all. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, just to see little old me. I'm actually quite large, but it's the thought that counts. Uh, get the link. Copy it to the Discord. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. ping. Everyone, get in here. Alright, there we go. So, we're going to be talking about ice and fire theories today. It, it, that is what's happening. That's the thing that's occurring today. Um, so, um, if, if you were here to listen to, to, to... If you're here to think about the Dragon Show, don't... That's not what's happening here. We're talking about the Fat Man books. Um, some people submitted theories that fit into both canons. Um, I'm sure some of those will slip through the cracks, but I plan on talking about them mostly separately. Um, we'll do them at the very, very end. Yes. Okie dokie. Maybe 10 minutes was a bit of an overestimation, but I've said it now, so... Oh, we just got an alert. That's funny. Um, <laughs> I have subscriptions turned on for alerts. Um, yeah, it, um, I said 10 minutes at the start, so I guess we're hanging out for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, yes, I have a spreadsheet, a big fucking spreadsheet, and, and those are the appropriate words to describe it. This thing has over 600 submissions in it. So that's what I've been dealing with of late, while also writing videos, and I, I do other stuff with my life as well, believe it or not. So this has been a, a, a great usage of um, my limited resources. It's been, it's been great. Um, I was thinking for so long about how to do this, like what order to do all of these in. You know, do I do them by category? Am I going to talk about them? Um, by character, am I gonna, you know, try and make some rhyme or reason to this? And the answer is no, I'm not gonna do any of those things. I'm just gonna pick theories out of, basically out of a hat. I'm just gonna scroll along until I see something that I think, ah, yes, let's talk about that. And it's, that, that's an, look, there's not much we can do about that. Oh, someone super chatted already. Why, why would you do that? But thank you. Um, yes, the Fat Man books are, books are much better than, than Dragon's show. How long will I stream? Um, I said the last one was going to go for three hours, and that was a lie. I'd like for this one to go for three hours, too. I've got other things to do with my day, and um, in about three hours' time, as far as I'm aware, Europe should be going to sleep. Pimp, pimp my Twitter. Um... I don't know if there's a need for that. I mean, you, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to. It's not the biggest deal. It's just a, it's a, just a little Twitter account. You watched, you stopped watching Electra on the Jacobites to watch this. Uh, hopefully you can continue watching that. That sounds interesting. Um, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the submissions have been just flooding in recently. I think, um, before I made the first Season 6 video, there were like 200 
fifty something around there. Yeah, it's over six hundred now. So thanks everyone. <laughs> Going to sleep at 2 a.m. Yeah, it's it's Saturday, right? <laughs> Look, I, I try to make things um as best as possible for an international audience, but um the best time to stream is literally 2 a.m. for me, and that's like to start the streaming. So I'd be going until I'd be going from 2 a.m. till 6 a.m. and it's like what 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 no don't no I'm not doing that, not not right now. Uh. Ugh, this tea is tepid at best. Ugh. All right. You, you you've been enjoying the um, you know the, the the videos I've been doing of late and such. I hope so. I've been enjoying them. They've been doing super well. Thanks everyone for watching them. It's been great. Say the line. I might do that at some point. Um. When I piss take review the books, it doesn't really work like that, does it? <laughs> you flipped your desk watching footy. <clears throat> Don't know if if many if many um many fellow countrymen are around. It is seven in the morning, so um fuck that. But <laughs> on a Sunday, uh, no less. Uh, but our, our um. Our holy day was yesterday, our grand final, and um, <laughs> I, I don't I don't watch footy much, but that was, I I enjoyed watching that game. It was a really close contest, and then at the very end, it, it became, like the floodgates opened. It was fucking we like crazy, man. By the end, like the score was being doubled. This kid kicked six goals. It was incredible. Anyway, none of you care about that. I'm just trying to pad the time so I don't have to talk about um the um all of your stupid theories so many of these are so dumb <laughs> and i can't wait to talk about them uh, most of them are legitimate um and and man it's going to take a long time to get through all of these oh no not 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 content oh no The Piss Maestro. He's obsessed with that name these days, aren't you, Simco? Got review when? Hopefully that'll be the next thing after Season 6 videos. <laughs> Golden stream, I hate you. <laughs> it's Scented Piss. <laughs> You think Ned is Ned? I don't know, man. It's kind of ridiculous. Alright. I might just go down the list when we start. A lot of There's a lot of repeated theories that I haven't filtered out yet, so expect a lot of we've already done that. Um, I, I'm fully anticipating that I will review the same theory twice. And um, you will all laugh at me, and I will not notice because I won't be looking at chat. It it'll be funny for you. It will be nothing for me, and I'll edit it out in the future, and it just won't matter, right? Your entertainment doesn't matter to me. This is about. This is about the theories, everybody. Hey, who who's typing in German in the chat? None of that. This isn't. This is a Strine only chat. Oh, another thing is, um, if if you were expecting to hear a certain theory but didn't hear it, submit it. The link is in the description and such. Is Nymeria the zombie polar bear? Um, no. So the thing with that is that um, we we want a zombie polar bear. God damn it. And see, they they said that they were um, pushing the producers to put a zombie polar bear in for several years at that point. But 
how would that have fit into any of the previous seasons? <laughs> No Germans are left. Oh, come on, man. Uh, too many in this Discord? Look, we if you think that we need some more people in the Discord to balance out the abundance of Germans, I don't know why so many German people are um, attracted to my Discord server. Um, but, you know, I, I just like having people around. Oh, hello. Everybody, we are starting very soon. Oh, we're starting right now. Cool. So that, that was the 10-minute timer ending. Okay, here we go. I'm switching to this view now. Excellente. And that's that. We'll be talking about theories from now on. The first submission I received, um, this was almost two months ago that I um, started these submissions, was um, by someone called Boots, Boots the White, who submitted, Garion Lannister is the Shrouded Lord. So this is a reference, well, let's not, it's, it's a theory concerning, um, I think it's Tyrion 3, A Dance with Dragons, where they're sailing through the Sorrows, and, uh, y you know, the thing happens, <laughs> um, and, and people start getting grayscale, and there's these weird, uh, uh, it's weird, and, <laughs> and then, um, then Tyrion doesn't get grayscale. The Shrouded Lord spares him. The Shrouded Lord being this mystical figure that is supposedly, uh, uh, like, you know, dishes out the grayscale, is in charge of all the spooky shit going on in the Sorrows. And people think, well, hang on. Why is it that Tyrion didn't get grayscale, but, you know, John Connington did? And there are a few explanations that people come up with. One, one of them is that Tyrion is a Targaryen, and Targaryens tend not to get sick. And so that's why he didn't get grayscale. Um, if you know me, you know I'm not inclined towards that theory. Now, Gary and Lannister being the Shrouded Lord, it, it's one I've had to um, grapple with a little bit, but um, I do not hate this theory in in, in any regard. I, I, I think it's actually quite good to um, bring Gary and Lannister back into the fold like that, give him some purpose throughout, um, I think there's an old Shift X video on this as well, um, give him some role in the story, even if, I don't think this will be confirmed, by the way, that's the thing that this axial, axial, um, plotting of theories doesn't capture, is, um, <clears throat> whether or not I think it'll ever actually come up again, because I don't think this will. I don't think we'll ever find out that Jerry and Lannister is the Shrouded Lord. However, I like it, and I think there's some chance to it. I'm not going to make it... I'm not going to say it's definite or anything like that. I think there's a good chance. I, it's my favourite theory for explaining who the Shrouded Lord is, and for what happened to Jerry and Lannister. There are other ideas about what happened to him, uh, being the Lannister uncle who went off to find... Um, was it? Hang on. Am I missing? Am I missing him up? No, there are a few Lannisters throughout history who were trying to find Bright Raw, and I think he was one of them, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's that one. Jerry and Lannister, Shroud of Lord. Not terrible. Not awful. The second one I received, also from Boots, is um, Jojen Paste. Everyone loves Jojen Paste, just like Grandma used to make. Um, if you're unfamiliar, this is, I think most people are familiar, this is the idea that um, in the Three-Eyed Crow's cave, the uh, weirwood paste that's blood red that Bran eats is actually Jojen. And there's a lot of um, links throughout the story between cannibalism and awakening deep powers within oneself. And uh, references to cannibalism and power uh, rife throughout the story. The Rat King is probably the, the closest example linking those two things, that um, cannibalism, eating one's f uh, kin, one's friends, is a way of, you know, becoming powerful. So I, I think it's a very George R.R. R. Martin thing to have written, 
I just said the guy's full name. It's a very gurm thing to write, and it, it explains where the fuck Jojen went throughout those chapters. It explains what the hell the paste was. I think there's a very high likelihood, and I am quite fond of the theory. I think it's a great one. There it is. There's Jojen paste. Okay, now I've got something a lot less <laughs> workable. We've got uh, also from Boots. We're going to do all of Boots' first. We've got Ned wasn't executed. Now, this isn't Ned was executed and, um, a a and like... Uh, live, lived on as, as, as something else we'll talk about them later on. Um, <laughs> so th this one is um, Cope, firstly. I, I think mo more it's tinfoil, actually, that Ned wasn't executed because no one actually believed this. Ned Stark is dead, man. And, and his death is quite important to the um, logic of the story. But th this theory is that um, Varys paid the faceless men in his place, so they had a faceless man executed instead of Ned Stark. I don't, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the point of that, especially because, um, so so this idea says that Var Varys says Ned is a useful pawn to help him against Littlefinger, but then, well, why don't we ever hear from Ned ever again, even though we follow Varys around for a little bit, um. No, 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 no. I, I almost kind of just want to get rid of this one altogether. It's not even really worth having on the field, but we'll just put it over here. Um, yeah, no. Ned, Ned dying is super important. Um, oh, boy. Now, the next one <laughs> is going to um, uh, ruffle some feathers. Uh, it's time to talk about some parentage. Is everyone ready to talk about Rhaegar, Lyanna, and who their baby is? Um, I'm just gonna open. I'm just gonna start with, of course, the most the obvious theory we have in the canon, and that's R plus L equals J. <clears throat> I don't think this one needs any introduction. It's canon in the show. Uh, we all saw it happen, and 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 so people are like, ah, okay, well, that that's that then. Uh, so there you go. Oh god, I really need to not look at chat, isn't that right? <laughs> okay, so, R plus L equals J, you know, uh, a big question throughout, actually it's not even that big, but it, it comes up is, you know, it, it's kind of integral to John's character, but a lot of things are integral to John's character, is, you know, who's me fucking mum? And, and here's your answer, John, it's Lyanna Stark, and, and your dad's not Ned, well he is your dad, but he's not your baby daddy. Um, so, so, there are a few interpretations of R plus L equals J, I'll be frank, and, and by that I mean ways in which Rhaegar and Lyanna, um, interacted with one another. <laughs> Some people think it's like a star-crossed lovers type of, oh, they were destined, uh, to bring forth the saviour, and they eloped out of love and a desire to save the world. And another interpretation puts it as a 24-year-old man manipulated a teenage girl into running away with him, cheating on his wife, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and making a baby. So, so there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to be said about this one. Um, for, for the most part, I, like, We'll talk about other um, Tower of Joy stuff later on. We'll, we'll get to all of that. But R plus L equals J seems pretty likely. <laughs> um, and it it's good. There are a f Over the years, people have poked holes in, the, in this idea. And a lot of those ideas have to do with other people, basically. Why doesn't Ned ever think of Rhaegar? Why does Ned's relationship with Jon, um, <clears throat> in spite of remaining so static, influence his decisions in King's Landing, if this is true? Is kind of a suggestion uh, put forward uh, through how he behaves after he... Whoops. After he relives the Tower of Joy in his dreams. And... 
I think that those holes are worth poking. I think they're worth looking into. I also think that um, at a certain point, this story, as trope of verse as it is, still needs to fall into tropes to twist them. So there's this idea that because... John is the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna, that he's, you know, oh, they, they've they been secretly married, and he's the secret heir to the throne, and he's gonna, he, he's the chosen one, and he's going to save everything and become king, and I don't know if too many people actually believe that. I think a lot of people are clued in to the way that George writes not being all that, um, tied up in a neat little package. Um, I think this is probably true, and I know that may surprise a few people. Um, I also don't hate it at all. I quite like it. And then... Then the nitty-gritty. Then the details of the relationship. You know? Th that's where I start disagreeing with a lot of people. I, I, I do not think Rhaegar was the coolest guy. <laughs> And I think... Hmm. Now, do I think that... That's interesting. Do I think that because... Gurm wants me to think that, or is that just me projecting my ideas about the kind of person Rhaegar would be in our real world onto him as a fictional character? Now, that's... that's That might be a bit too much for this particular discussion. Um, people are throwing around the stupidest ideas in chat... Why would I ever look there? So yeah, that's that's our plus L equals J. It's it's look. Let's be honest. It's it's probably true, and it's not bad. Okay. Sorry, everyone. We'll talk about other ideas as well. I love talking about other ideas, and and we'll get into those. Uh, there are some of them I also don't hate as well. Um, then we have. Uh, let's let's skip around a bit. Actually, you know what? I need to mark the ones that I've done so that I don't redo them. So there we go. Bang. Love ticking those off. Okay, let, let's chew on something a little lighter, perhaps, than R plus L equals J. Actually, no, maybe let's dwell in that area now that I've opened the can of worms. <clears throat> Next up is R plus L equals D. Um, this is the idea that Rhaegar and Lyanna's child is Daenerys Targaryen. Now, this is packaged with a lot of other ideas. Typically, that Jon is the... Well, Jon has to be the child of another uh, coupling. Or, sometimes people say that both Daenerys and Jon are Rhaegar and Lyanna's children. Which is, um, actually, you know what, I'll just put that on the board... To start off with, we've got R plus L equals D plus J, and I'm just going to put that down where it belongs. There we go. And, um, so this idea is based on... <laughs> it's based. No. Um, so people think that Daenerys' past is pretty wacky, and I don't think they're wrong to think that. I think that... Daenerys, uh, th there's there's something strange going on there about the things she thinks about her childhood, the things she thinks about her identity, and the way that she's introduced to us in the story. <clears throat> so, hmm. A and uh, th the other idea, so that's, um, we'll talk about that in just a moment. We'll get to Lemon Gate. Uh, but... Then, from that, people are wondering, well, who is this girl, actually? And, um... And then this R plus L equals D idea, it... Um, the idea is that it explains some of what Ned does in King's Landing. Well, actually, the, the most important thing he does in King's Landing, which is decide to stay. After the Tower of Joy Dream. Which, so... In King's Landing, Ned has the power to stop the assassination attempt from on Daenerys, and people say that, well, 
if that's what he can do, and that's what he tries to do after the dream, why doesn't he... Uh, well, well, when, why wouldn't it be that the dream has to do with Daenerys? And the counter-argument to that is, well, it's about a child. It's about him protecting a child, it reminds him that he needs to do that. But, you know, it's still there. And... <sighs> the other counter-argument is, well, what's the point of making Daenerys Rhaegar's child? And, y you know, because she's already the last legitimate Targaryen heir. Like, according to the presented story. <clears throat> Sorry for all the coughing, my goodness. Didn't expect to have such a dry mouth. Oh, that's better. So yeah, that's that's our plus like was D. It's an idea. Some people think it. Um, I do not hate R plus D so much. How do you how do you solve lemon? We'll talk about that. Um, but for now, R plus L equals D. I do not hate it at all. I just don't think that there's too much of a possibility. I'm actually going to put it not so much lower on the love it scale. I I really like the idea that um, what do I like about it? It's interested, isn't it? Isn't it? I don't have COVID. Never. Um. I should briefly explain why I don't like this. Um, first of all, it it makes Daenerys and John siblings, and uh, and we know that. I'm pretty sure Gurm has said that Daenerys was born nine months after John, so I I think people have done the crunched the numbers and figured um there is a way for Lyanna to have had two babies in the Tower of Joy, one conceived at Harrenhal, one conceived later on. And, and you know, it's like, uh, hmm. I, again, I don't see the point. Because that's the, that's the thing I see with these series, is that there kind of needs to be a point. Gurm does put a lot of pointless shit into his theory into his books and that's good that's good fun <clears throat> i'm dying i'm dying on stream the way that all entertainers want to go out dying live on stage um yeah i i i do not like it because I don't, I don't well I have I've never seen a compelling point for why I should like it firstly. <laughs> and as for its likelihood I think there's too many hoops. The other thing is that we we can't forget that the show does exist and like I know that that's a problem for a lot of people. But there it is, it exists, I'm very sorry to remind you of that. But, in the show, 100% R plus L equals J. And that seems like one of the important things that uh, the, the writers would have picked up from George. Then again, he's free to change whatever he wants. And I do believe... There are lots of things, whoops, that he puts in the story. You know, he, he talks about being a gardener. He plants so many seeds, he can follow up whichever ones, you know, he wants to, or that just naturally arise from the story to, to be, be interesting in some way or another. And I think that, um, let, let's bring it up, let's talk about Lemon Gate. The, all of the inconsistencies in Daenerys' story, which some people don't think are inconsistencies. I think I, I think they are. I think that there's uh, wacky shit going on with Daenerys. She believes a bunch of weird things that don't quite add up. Mainly, the, the, the most egregious thing people bring up is that she remembers a lemon tree at the house with the red door that she thinks is in Bravos, And we're told multiple times throughout the story 
that lemon trees do not grow in Bravos. There you go, I said the line. Um, and, and this is made a point of several times. And it's true, lemons do not grow there. And people are like, well, what if it was a gift? What if there was a greenhouse at the Sea Lord's Palace where there was a lemon tree? And it's like, do you think she would have mentioned the greenhouse? And do you think Aya would have mentioned the greenhouse when she's in Bravos? Or Sam would have mentioned the... Br we never hear about a greenhouse. At least if we do, it's... The other thing is that the House of the Red Door is supposed to be a simple life, and simple lives don't include the Sea Lord's Palace, where he has a menagerie of exotic beasts and all, all manner of, of crazy shit going on at his house. It's a simple um, abode that she remembers. That's the entire point, is that it, it, it represents a simple, rustic point of return for her. So when pe I, I think that's what pushes me more in the direction of thinking that Daenerys isn't exactly who she thinks she is. That doesn't mean I think that she's the daughter of Rhaegar and Lyanna. I think I, I think there's still a possibility for her to be who she is, but just that there's more to her childhood than we've been told. I think that Lemon Gate is is true I, because it is. Throughout the story, we are told multiple times that lemon trees do not grow there, and yet she remembers a lemon tree in a place that she thinks was in Bravos, and that's just you, that's you can't reconcile that. She remembers a lot of things that don't make sense with what else we know about the story. <clears throat> I think that it's. Basically, especially given with how many times she's told to remember who she is and to look back. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I think add all those things up, mix them together, uh, uh, put it in the oven on high for 25 minutes. High isn't the setting on my oven. Um, anyway, Lemon Gate. You get Lemon Gate and you get a t-shirt that has a stupid quote on it. And and I like it, and I think it's true. I, I think it's true that there's more to Daenerys' childhood, and I think it's true that lemons do not grow in Bravos, and that that tree must have been elsewhere. Now, so the implication there is like, well, you know, where was the tree? Um, <clears throat> the prime candidates are somewhere in Dawn, and um, somewhere in the southern free cities, I think the ones people bring up mostly are Lice and Tyrosh. And um, they're all wrong. It's actually on Skagos. So that's Lemon Gate. And then, hang on, I need to put this back down where I, where I, where I think it goes. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. I keep doing the thing. Stop doing the thing. Okay, so that's Lemon Gate. Talked about for too long. Then we get. Okay, here's a prediction. I like these ones because um, it's just kind of like an idea about what, what you think is going to happen in the story. And, um, and, and this one is a, a pretty good one. It's a pretty well known one as well Night Lamp, uh, the, the, the Stannis battle plan. That he's going to uh, lure the Bolton forces, with, uh, well, Frey forces, really, uh, in this upcoming battle onto a frozen lake that they're going to smash the ground in, and, and it's going to be great, and Stannis is going to win, and he's going to be king, and the story's going to end, and everyone's going to be happy, because Stannis, the one true king, actually did it. And, like, uh, oh, hey, man, thanks for dropping in. Um... Yeah, Night Lamp. It, 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 um, where does this one come from? I, I know that I'm pretty sure there's a really lengthy Cantus, um, treatise on Night Lamp. I'm not sure if that's where it came from. I think it is, though. Um, yeah, yeah, it's great. We love Night Lamp around here. We love Stannis, and, um, we, we love seeing, um, uh, all, um, the ways he can win. And I think that George is really putting 
effort into detailing the setup to these battles. Not just the Battle of Ice, but there's also, of course, so much put into what's going on in Marine and for things that aren't as important to the story, or at least to the main characters is his story. Um, you know, we're also hearing a lot about Storm's End. Like, the, the setup going into the conflict there. Especially when you consider how much um, setup and time was spent on, you know, the Whispering Wood or the, or the Golden Tooth or something like that. We are now spending so much time getting to know the field of these battles that it seems almost kind of impossible not for there to be something like this going on. So yeah, I, I think that Night Lamp is basically true. I think that Stannis' plan does... I'm going to put it right up here. We love Night Lamp. Yeah. Yeah, go Night Lamp. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's going to go as entirely planned for Stannis. I don't think that everything's going to work out peaches for him. Oh, oh, that's kind of a pun. I didn't even... Okay, so that's Night Lamp. And then... I don't think I received anyone talking about what he's going to do with Theon. Or maybe I did. But yeah, there's this idea that um, to appease the Queen's men, Stannis needs to execute Theon, but executing Theon is a really stupid thing to do because he's the heir to the Iron Islands. He needs to trade with Glover, uh, um, with, the, with the Ironborn to receive the Glover hostages. There's just so much going on that killing Theon would kind of ruin. And so doing that isn't something he wants to do. So Theon looks like an old man. Arnulf Karstark looks like an old man. He betrayed Stannis. And I think it was him, at least. And uh, fake-out executions are all over the Northern plot. So I think that that seems kind of likely. <clears throat> Actually, I'm just going to put that down here. Um, Stannis executes Arnulf. Um, I'm not even going to write the rest of it in. Yeah, I, it's it's good, and it seems kind of true. It, it's... It, it it's harder to be certain about that one than Night Lamp, just because there's less going into it. I think that Stannis executing Theon, that's not how Theon's story ends, but I think that Stannis does need to kill someone. There's no phone or microwave on. Um, I live by a road. That might be what you're hearing. <laughs> uh, ooh. Okay, some more parentage. It's time for for another big boy. We've got well, let's let's um let's tick some boxes first. We've got Aerys plus Joanna is Tyrion. We all we we've, we've all heard it now. Arnolf, have I have I done a silly? Okay, whoops. Uh, so this one is that. Is Tyrion Targaryen. This is Tyrion, is the son of Aerys and Joanna, and I don't like it. I don't like this one. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Um. So there's. It still lives on this theory, which is, it's it's in it's great. <laughs> I, I, I love that people have the energy to believe such things. Um, I don't I don't like it because so I was I was talking to that there's an old Shift X video coming out soon that I was talking to him about, and and he was telling me this in response to my to my video about Tyrion Targaryen, um, and he said. <laughs> Uh, it, it, uh, uh, no, I don't want to talk about what's going to... No. So, um... I don't like it because of what it does to Tyrion's relationship with Tywin. And he pointed out to me that, hey, Tywin is still Tyrion's dad, like how Ned is still Jon's dad, right? And 
Yeah. <laughs> True. Um, that 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 the things that Tywin truly hates about Tyrion, aside from his deformity, are things that Tywin um Tywin's doing led to Tyrion doing as well. I I'd but um I I went into the timeline of this and and I, and he came to a completely different conclusion than I did. But I I just do not see how um how Tywin uh, how Aerys impregnating Joanna works with the timeline because Tywin merely threatened to resign and then didn't when Aerys said no don't do that. We also don't know very much about this area. Um, like, the, the World of Ice and Fire makes a point of Eris turning um, Rayella's ladies-in-waiting into whores. So what's the point of that if there's nothing to it? So I, I, I get it. You know what? I'm, I'm going to put, like... I don't think it's no way. I, I, think there's a, I think there's way. But I do hate it. <laughs> what I hate a lot less is this. A plus J plus T equals T. Now, I think that this is even less likely, but I like it a lot more. Uh, maybe maybe somewhere up here. Yeah, let's put it there. Okay, and and then just for clarity, uh, I'm going to put uh, T plus... Just, just canon. Um, Tywin plus um, Joanna is, is Tyrion. So, so th that's that's the one I think is most true, and and it's the one that I like the most as well. So, um, a plus j plus t equals t is the chimera theory that um, Tyrion is a fused. Uh, what was it? The the, the heteropaternal superfecundation thing, where um, Ares impregnated Joanna, Tywin impregnated Joanna, and then those um, what do you call them? Are they zygotes? No, it's it's after they're zygotes. I've forgotten. I don't care. I'm not a, I'm not a biontologist. Um, yeah, they fuse together, and, and that becomes Tyrion, and that's why he's got all this du duality to him, and such. And and that's a lot more fun to me, and 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 I like it. Let's put it up there, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. But then, then, then we've got the real kicker. Twin Targs. We've got uh, Ares and Joanna is Jamie and Cersei. Um, now, the timeline elaborates a lot less on what happens around here. So there's a lot less to go on. Which means that it's probably not... It, it's probably embryo. That's the... Thanks, everyone. Yep. Cool, great, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, Eris plus Joanna is Jamie and Cersei. This one, there's no, there's not as much about it, which says to me that it's less likely to be relevant. However, let's just let's just delve into delve, uh, uh, delve into what it means. Um, Eris plus Joanna being Jamie and Cersei. Um, works for me in um, a lot of those. Uh, what am I? Uh, what, what am I talking about? Like narratively reflective ways that um, Eris and Joanna equals Tyrion does for a lot of people. Oh, I, I I should specify that Tyrion riding a dragon is not off the table, and in fact, I think is quite likely. And I don't hate it. I think that's I think that's fine. Yep. I think yep, sure. So I I don't you don't have to be I don't think you have to be a Targaryen to be a dragon rider. But but we'll talk about that later. Um <laughs> uh Eris and Joanna, Joanna and Cersei. So the Jamie and Cersei. Whoopsie doopsie. I really love the idea that Robert was so hell bent on getting rid of every Targaryen that he like every potential threat heir to the throne or whatever that he completely failed to miss the three f uh, 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 full incest babies running around as his children 
I I think that that's I think that's funny. Um, I also <laughs> look so. People think that Tyrion's fascination with the dragons is evidence in favor of him being a Targaryen. I think that I I don't think that. I think that dragons are cool, and you can like them without being a Targaryen, and that's also true for fire. Fire is fun to look at, but Cersei really likes looking at fire. It's kind of scary, and Targaryens also like looking at fire. So there's that. Um, then you also get uh, the the twin cest with like the, the the craziest thing about the Lannister siblings, Jaime and Cersei, do incest all the time, and like. I feel like we should talk about this a bit more, guys. It's a bit concerning that they do this. And, like, so there's, there's plenty of reasons in the story for how they came to doing that. And a lot of it is Tywin-based. But we should not discount that the notion of sibling-sibling incest, reproduction, gross is heavily associated with Targaryens in the story. I, I think that this is all, like, connective tissue, circumstantial evidence that holds basically as much water as, as, the, um, as the Tyrion Targ theory, but I like it a lot more. I'm going to put it, at, like, like, basically here. So yeah, there you go. Um, it also... The thing with Tyrion Targ is people are like, yeah, Tyrion killed Jaime's dad, and Jaime killed Tyrion's dad. And it's like, well, hang on. <laughs> Why not have it so that they killed their own fathers? Isn't that cooler? I think that's cooler. Yeah, there are cars in the background. I live on a racetrack. The Grand Prix qualifiers were last night. It was awful. Um, then we've... So, yeah... And then a lot of people have this uh, fleeting association with Jaime and Azora High, and I don't think that's as important to me. But yeah, there you go. Some people are like, yeah, man, uh, he can be Aerys and Joanna's son to, so that he can be Azora. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it also means that Tyrion is Tywin's only child, which I think suits quite well that the child he hates the most, the child that reflects him probably the most clearly. All of his children reflect him, don't get me wrong, that's that's how being a parent works. Um, but I think that, that work, that's quite resonant for me in the story. And of course, things being resonant for me doesn't mean that they're likely, it just means that I like them. And that's why this theory is up here. I really like it. But I don't think it's very likely, which is unfortunate. I think the most likely turnaround, the, the most likely turnout, is that they're all Tywins. Unfortunate. I'm sorry. I also quite like Jamie Azor High, but we'll talk about Azor High. Should we talk about that now? Uh, can I be fucked talking about that at this moment? Are we gonna talk about something a little, a, a little crazier? Oh, you know what? A lot of people submitted this to me. A lot of people submitted... Uh, how am I going to write... I'm going to write Littlefinger by Slicer equals Sweet Robin. A lot of people submitted that to me, and I thought that was funny, because this is my first video. Like, and I'm pretty... <laughs> so I, I think a lot of people just haven't seen that video and don't know my thoughts on this already. I love Good. this theory. And I think it's quite likely. I, 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 yep, I'm quite into this one. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, that's the other thing. Again, I talked about earlier how this um, plotting of theories doesn't take into account the likelihood of them being revealed. I think that most of the things we've talked about probably won't be revealed. Um... Uh, the the especially the Lannister parentage ones. 
obviously Night Lamp or Stannis executing Arnolf or Tyrion riding a dragon, that stuff will either happen or not happen. But then um, all this other stuff is more murky. And I think George does that. Most of the stuff we talk about as theorists will not have definitive answers. By the time the series ends, if the series ends... Um, yeah, and I think we have to be willing to accept that. That even after the series ends, we will still be having these discussions. We'll still be interpreting the story to figure out, well, to, to see what makes the most sense to us personally. And I think that that's something beautiful, beautiful about the way Gurm writes, is that each of us forms a personal connection with all of these ideas and then we can engage with each other about... Isn't it beautiful how he's bringing together all of these people just by discussing... Oh, isn't it wonderful? Thank you so much, George. Write your fucking books. Um, no, so Littlefinger plus Lightsaber equals Sweet Robin. Lots of people submitted it. I thought that was funny to me. But yeah, let's talk about it. So... Um, I firmly believe that John Aaron is sterile. Or at least not fertile. We're really filling up the uh, the the top right section of the board right there, aren't we? Need to f find stuff that goes in the bottom right. What's going on there? Um, yeah. So um, y y you can watch my video on this. It, it's still an okay video. It's quite old. It's almost four years old. Holy crap. Um, yeah, and I, I, I give you all of my thoughts on how this came about. But yes, um, I think that Sweet Robin's kind of a reflection of Littlefinger. He's weak, frail. Um, everyone underestimates him. And he's destined to be very powerful. I, I, and, and I think that that's kind of cool. And George does that a lot in, like, reflecting um, people's, you know, your children reflecting your own values. Which, again, I like A plus J was J plus C. Because Cersei goes mad, like the Mad King. And Jamie, like, it is who... I like Jamie. And then, so, little thing. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they had a relationship in King's Landing when Sweet Robin was conceived and born. And then, um, when when Littlefinger refer returns to the to the Eyrie, no, I think it's when they meet at the Fingers at um at the Drear Fort. Um, yeah, Sweet Robin's underestimated. Um, she's like, I want to make another child. And like, okay, okay. Is she talking about the aborted fetus uh, from River Run like a, a billion years ago? Or is she talking about Sweet Robin? Um, and she's like a brother for Sweet Robin. She doesn't say a half-brother for Sweet Robin, so I don't know, but, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like it a lot. You can check out my, my thoughts on that one. It's a good video, I think. It might have aged poorly. It's been a long time since I've watched it. Yeah, I, I think that Sweet Robin is underestimated. I think that he's not... He's not the, the, the useless little boy everyone thinks he is. I mean, I, he's weak, definitely, like, physically. But uh, there's, there's more to him than that. I, I He's kind of Bran-like in that way. There's more to him. He has a weirwood throne, man. Um, I'm just picking the theories out of fucking nowhere here. Um, wow, that one's really stupid. That one says Rhaegar plus Howland equals John. I'm not even gonna put that on the board. That's stupid. Ah, of course, we've got Gravedigger. Okay, Gravedigger. Everyone loves Gravedigger. That Sandor Clegane is still alive, and he's the Gravedigger on the Quiet Isle. Um, uh, well, so, the, the Hound's horse is definitely on the Quiet Isle. Um, and then, then, you know, there's this dude who's, who, who seems to be, like, atoning, he, he's digging graves, the, the, the elder brother talks about redemption and, and how, 
the Hound is dead, but he doesn't mention Sandor Clegane. So, so th there's there's Gravedigger. Um, a lot of people put this in conjunction with Clegane Ball because they need to explain how uh, how they're both still alive so that they can fight each other. Ah, uh, mm, I. I don't really care about Clegane Ball. Any, like, if it happens, whatever. If it doesn't happen, also fine. Um, now, you, you can say that Gravedigger was confirmed by the show, but... Eh. What, uh, kind of. I think it'd be kind of fun if he showed up somewhere completely different. If he, like, if that was a, a big old red herring and he's actually... The twist, uh, it turns out he was Lem Lemon Cloak the whole time. Not actually that, that's dumb. But, yeah, I covered, um... Yeah, I covered that. Uh, we haven't talked about Patchface yet. Oh my goodness, I get to talk about Patchface. Gravedigger, yep, yep, it's pretty good. And it's, it's... It's not canon. People need to stop doing that. <laughs> People are like, isn't that basically canon? People talk about R plus L equals J as though it's canon. No, it's show canon, definitely. But it's not book canon. It seems very likely, but it's not canon. That's not what canon means. And so, yeah, I, I really do like Sandor digging shit up. I think there, there was someone who pointed out that... Um... Do we see the Gravedigger's face? No, I don't think we do. Anyway, Gravedigger. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not too attached to it. I'm quite happy, actually, if we never see Sandor again. I, I, but, but I do like the... In fact, I think Gravedigger is cool if Sandor doesn't come back. I think it's still cool even if he does, but I think it would be best... If, if that's just the last place we saw him. If he was just, you know, atoning for his sins. He's done with violence. It, it, it's done with him. I don't think that's very likely. But I, I can hope. So Gravedigger, I'm not going to say that it's definitely a thing. But I can't see any real points against it. And I like it. There you go. There's Gravedigger. Yeah. Um, Alrighty. Ooh. Shall we talk about the pink letter? I think we shall. So, we've got the pink letter. We're going to have to go through a lot of things here. So, we've got... Um, Brienne being the descendant of Dunk, I think, is canon. I'm pretty sure that is... Like, a Gorm said, yeah, that's a thing. What beeping are you talking about? I don't hear any beeping. I'll have to check that out on the VOD. Okay, so a pink letter. There's no microwave. <laughs> I don't know what you people are talking about. Okay, so pink letter. Um, we're going to start with um, Ramsey. Uh, the, the, the story as presented is that this letter comes from Ramsey Bolton. Yeah, there are like 30 pink letter theories. We're going to talk about like six of them, I guess. Um, the letter itself isn't pink. It's just sealed with a, you know, the pink of House Bolton. Um, I'm going to close chat now. You're very distracting. <laughs> yeah, so the pink letter... Um, Hang on, I've got one adjustment to make. Excuse me. What's, what, stop doing that. There you go, the pink letter. Um... Written by Ramsey. I don't think it was written by Ramsey. I don't think that at all. I think I think you're being. I don't. I think I think he's messing with you. Um. Yeah, something as. I think it requires more of uh, digging into than just accepting that Ramsey did it, because we we receive other letters from Ramsey throughout the story, and this doesn't bear much of a resemblance to any of them. So, there you go. There's that one. Uh, at least, if it is Ramsey, there's something going on. I think needs to be accepted. Um. Because. 
of all these weird discrepancies between the pink letter and the other letters we see from him, where the handwriting is completely different, there are no additional signatories, there's um, no blood or skin attached or anything like that. Um, the usage of the word crow um, to uh, talk about members of the Night's Watch, that's, that's fucking weird for Ramsay to do. That's a, that's a wildling word. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, I don't think it's impossible that Ramsey wrote it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't think it's impossible. Uh, maybe, maybe, I put, no, I don't hate it that much. I don't really care too much if Ramsey did it, but I think it's better if someone else did it. Like, could you imagine if we got Winds of Winter and it was like, yep, Rams, and everything on the story, everything on the letter is true. Ramsey, uh, Stannis died off screen. Um, <laughs> oh man, could you imagine if he did that? Oh god, we'd kill him. Then, then, then we have um, Pink Letter. Some people think, uh, I don't know. Let's say Asher. Some people think Asher wrote it. Um, this is one like I, I, uh? Uh? Um, yeah. Some people think this. Um, I, I've, I, I dislike this even more, and I, I, I don't, hmm, it's, it's strange to me, um, hmm, yeah, I think if Ramsey wrote it, um, he's, he's lying. Um, let me, in fact, th there's not too much to say about each of these. Uh, pink letter, some people think that Barbary Dustin, is it Barbary, hang on, Barbary, or oh, Barbary, Barbary Dustin, um, wrote the pink letter, and, uh, there's something going on with her, but I, I don't think she wrote the pink letter. Um, I'll, I'll give you slightly higher chances, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like it much more. And then, then we've got, um, uh, who else wrote it? Um, some people think Theon wrote it. Uh, so, so this would have to be after the battle that we haven't seen yet. Is everyone hearing these beeps? Or, or is it just like a few pe I'm so confused. Um, so yeah, some uh, some people think that Theon wrote the pink letter, and uh, mm, so, mm. I I just don't see any of these things. You feel like, ah uh, yeah, I think the likelihood of Ramsay writing it, yeah, it's probably higher than that. Yeah, yeah, it can live there, if only so that something can live there. Uh, so we've got pink letter Theon. Um, I think it's more likely than Asher doing it, but I don't really care for it that much. No beeps. That's so weird. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> I, I'm being gaslit by my own by my own chat. Yeah, we've got some um, beautiful uh, native uh, bird life around here that you may hear. Uh, no sheep that I'm aware of. If there are sheep in here, um, I'm fucking, uh, they're invisible. Uh, but yeah, mostly birds. And I don't have a problem with birds. We love birds around here. Um, uh, then we've got pink letter. Who else could have written the pink letter? Go on then. Ah, uh, yeah, let's say it's Mance. Fine. We'll talk about Mance writing the pink letter. Yeah, I think it's a lot better. Yeah, I, uh... See, the thing is, I have to give credence to what's presented in the canon. I have to, just by, just by virtue of it being the thing we're told, I have to say that it's more likely than all of this other stuff. But man's writing the pink letter, like, I, it works super well. I'm gonna say, um, well, they can't both be, well, actually, they can be equally likely. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I, I hope that Mance wrote it. I think that it's better. Stannis? You want me to t Stannis? No, there are no emus around here. Uh, <laughs> pink letter Stannis. 
Okay, so some people think that Stannis himself wrote the pink letter and that it's like part of a personal ploy of his to fake his death. But Mike, it's like... Mm. The purpose of the li- of the pink letter, what the pink letter does is it leads to Jon Snow's death. It, um, it, 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 it brings him to rise against Ramsay to declare really stupidly that he personally, the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, is going to intervene in the affairs of the Seven Kingdoms. This is a big no-no. Big no no, no 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 no, John. Um, I don't, and and I think that anyone who sent the pink letter would probably know this. Would probably think, ah, yes, this will cause an insurrection at Castle Black, and I don't think that Stannis wants that. <laughs> um, I I I think that. I, um, it's, I, uh, there's, so this idea that Stannis is going to fake his own death and, and like, weasel his way into a victory. And, like, eh, mm, yeah, sure. But I don't think he would have done this. Oh, you, you, you didn't know what, what letter we were talking about. That must have been super awkward for you. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think Stannis wanted the effects of the pink letter. The information in the pink letter, sure, I think, uh, are things that he would want to spread in the case that he wants to fake his own death after this battle. Or even before the battle, I don't fucking know. Um, the pink letter can help Mance by being a point of coordination to Tormund and by creating uh, chaos at Castle Black. Yeah, I, 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 I do not see it being Stannis. I, I really don't. So sorry, everyone who, who think who has his head cannon that um, it's this big brain move by Stannis. I think if Stannis did it, it's not that great. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a there's a theory that Melisandre did it as well. Okay, um, we'll talk about that. Uh, hang on, let me say where I want this. I, I think it's about as like it's probably more likely than these, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't I don't really like these either. Okay, and then there's the Melisandre one. Uh, this one's like what? I I think there are basically two likely candidates. I think it was Ramsay or um, Mance. I think that's basically what it came down to. Uh, Melisandre. Now why would she now so? Does she want John dead so that she can resurrect him? Is that the idea here? Is that... Is that... Is that... Hmm. Yeah, Melisandre doesn't know... Doesn't reasonably know a bunch of the things mentioned in the letter. So... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't... I don't think so. Sorry for littering this this corner with pink letter theories, but there's so many of them. Um, hang on. Whoa, I've just moved the entire world. So, yeah, no, I, I'm just going to put, put, put that over here as well. Sorry about that, everyone, but it's just where they've got to go. Okay, so pink letter... This, someone sub... Okay, someone submitted here that, um... Sam wrote the pink letter... I'm just gonna read out their submission. I hang on. This might be a shit post. Um. Yep, it's a shit post. Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, here's one. Here's one I've I prepared earlier. Uh, we've got long claw is black fire. This is one that's like, um, it's trying to bring together a few ideas, mainly that, um, they want Jon to have the legitimate Targaryen sword. Like, oh wow, he has the sword, so he must be the true king. 
which isn't quite how that works because Damon Blackfire had Blackfire and he wasn't the tr like that that didn't really work did it Um I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to write I'm not going to put Shireen Pink letter am I because no uh so Longclaw being Blackfire is I'm going to hide chat again I need to stop doing that Long Longclaw being Blackfire is it seems to me like a bit of a cope Longclaw has a history. Blackfire has a history. Those histories don't coincide at all. We like Bittersteel took Blackfire across the Narrow Sea, and within all likelihood, it's still somewhere around the Golden Company. Longclaw appeared in House Mormont five hundred years ago, apparently. Now, I say apparently because there's no way of, of confirming this, but that, that lack of confirmation doesn't mean that it's a different sword, and it being a different sword doesn't mean that it's Blackfire. I think Blackfire is probably a, like a... a uh, no, I don't think it's Blackfire. How would that work? How would, how would it have gotten there? How would... I'm assuming it would have been J.L. Mormont's father, or perhaps grandfather at the time, um, being in charge of Bear Island. Um, th there's this notion that... Um, hang on, let me just rank this. I don't like this, and I don't think it's... I don't think there's much of a possibility. I'll, I'll give it... I'll give it better than zero odds, but I do hate it. I, I think um, Longclaw being Dark Sister... Uh, has more to it. I also don't like it. Uh, it's better, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, and, and that's because there's this idea that has some water to it that Blood Raven wanted future, uh, yeah, like gave it to Aemon so that uh, you know a future Targaryen could, yeah, you know. Uh, basically, Blood Raven conspired to give Jon Snow the like a Valyrian steel sword, but Dark Sister doesn't hold any um, legitimacy, um, uh, you know, influencing power uh, like Blackfire does. So it doesn't mean much. I think that Longclaw is Longclaw, most likely. Um, I like more cool swords in the story. I don't I don't want to have there be fewer of them. I think the Dark Sister is probably in the cave. I think it would be cool if Mira left with Dark Sister. If they leave the cave, when they leave the cave. Um I think that would be pretty dope. This is live. Hello. Longclaw equals ice. That's that's one of the stupidest ideas. Um ice is an ancient, ancient ceremonial sword that is huge! And it's definitely Valyrian steel, and no one on Westeros knows how to reforge Valyrian steel. So, yeah, no. Ice is ice, Longclaw is Longclaw. And, like, Oath, Oathkeeper and Widow's Whale. Hang on, is it Widow's Whale? Am I mixing up my... No, I think it is Widow's Whale. Or is that its name in the show? It's a different name in the books. Uh, I know that Joffrey's original sword is Lion's Tooth. And then there's Heart Eater? Is that just a suggestion that's made to him? Man. <coughs> Gotta read the fucking books. So, <laughs> well, uh, now that we're up in the Three-Eyed Crow's cave, let's talk about someone super interesting. We've got Cold Hands. What the fuck is going on with Cold Hands, hey? So, um, main main theory is Cold Hands is Benjen, Benjen Stark, your your boy Uncle Benno. He he's he's the kind of dead, uh, uh help helpful elk man, and he's not. It turns out, because George said that he wasn't. <laughs> now, George lies to us frequently a lot of the things he said in interviews have turned out to be bullshit 
Um, this happens all the time. However, he wasn't saying this to us. He was saying it to his editor. Um, cold, cold Hands isn't Benjin. It turns out. The thing that everyone thought was the most obvious thing did, isn't true. Um, so, uh, and also, I don't like it that much. I think it's more fun if he's someone else. Because, um, Benjin, we love Benjin. Bran loves Benjin. But Cold Hands is so creepy and so weird and fascinating and, and mm, if he was Benjin, it's kind of like, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's what happened to Benjin. Um, I think the fate of Benjin might be one of those things that we never find out. I also think that the true identity of Cold Hands is a thing that we won't find out. Um, someone suggest someone submitted to me this wacky theory that he's Damon Targaryen. And I, th and, and you know, props for creativity. 10 out of 10 for creativity. This was, it's an actual theory. This one wasn't a shitpost. This is a legitimate belief that is still wacky as all get out. But, you know, good on you for thinking of it and, and, and trying to make an argument for it. I hate it and there's no way, but, you know, good on you. Um, no, Damon Targaryen's dead. Y you know what tells me... Um, that that Daemon Targaryen is not in the story that is presented to us. That he's not a part of anything going on. That he's not present for the story. He's not mentioned, I think, once in any of the five main novels. Daemon Targaryen is purely a, a, um, a historical figure. You'd think that if George was going to do this epic reveal that Cold Hands, this guy who's been helping out our, 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 our intrepid protagonists north of the wall through, through the frozen wastelands, it turns out he is actually, dun dun dun, Daemon Targaryen, the rogue prince. And then, um, and then most readers are like, huh? Who? What? <laughs> because most readers haven't obsessed over fire and blood like we have. So, that's not anything. I don't think Daemon Targaryen is anywhere. I think Daemon Targaryen fucking died at the God's Eye. If he didn't, he did run off to live with Nettles for the rest of his life. That'd be fun. Uh, I think that'd be cute. But no, there's one other Cold Hands theory that I would really, really, really like to share with you. I think that this one is fucking dope. We've got Cold Hands. Are you ready for this? Equals the Night's King. Now, to clarify, the Night King is a show-only character. The Blue Dude, Zombie Satan, Officer Freezy Boy. Um, th that's the Night King. The Night's King is the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, who declared himself king, married an other, so goes the story, and he was taken down by um, the Lord of Winterfell, who I believe was his brother named Bran Stark. So goes the story that we are told. A few times the Night's King is mentioned, I think. So, what the fuck is... Um, I, I, I don't know how much this one gets around, but man, I fucking love this thing. I love this theory. I think it's awesome. I, I give it... I, I, it's going to go right up the top. Uh, not too far along to the right, because, you know, there, there's not too much uh, going on. Like, there's, there's not so much information to draw on here. Um, no, no, not the Night... Rhaegar is the Night King. Cold Hands is the Night's King. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Cold Hands being the Night's King, I think fits perfectly. Because um, I believe Leaf tells Bran, or is it Mira, that he's been dead for long. And being a child of the forest... Um, Long means something different to Leaf than it does to Bran, right? Long for Bran is like the wait between breakfast and lunch. 
Um, long for Bran is is you know you know the the bus that didn't didn't show up on time. Um, long for Leaf is centuries. At least that's my understanding of the Children of the Forest. Um, they. There's no description of the Night's King, no. But Bran does have a vision of first men. Um, the Night's King is most definitely a first men thing, right? Because um, the idea is that all of this stuff happened long before the arrival of the Andals. And therefore, um, there's no iron. It's all bronze. Because the first men didn't work with iron. Um, and so you might be thinking, well, hang on. Cold hands is described as wearing, um, what is it, chain mail? Or is it like ring mail or something like that? But then, Bran has a vision of those first men with their bronze, with, with their bronze armor and weapons and shit, and, and he describes mail. He describes, I think, ring mail, something like that. He describes what cold hands is wearing, basically. So, I love this, that cold hands is a f like millennia old um <laughs> artifact of history who who may be himself Bran Stark like not not our Bran Stark in a time traveling kind of way but like an a very ancient Bran Stark um i think there's a quote of Col i'm i'm actually going to bring up the um Hang on, where is it? Um, Knights King. There's lots of Knights King related theories. Um, where is it? Hang on, let me look for Cold Hands. There we go. Over there. Okay. Quick, to 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 someone's Reddit thread. This is um, wow, this one's it's a really old one, but I don't think it's gained much traction. I'm bringing it back, baby. Submitted by someone called Aryan Targaryen. I mean, it's probably not their actual name. Um, hang on. Oh, I'm not going to read it out to you. Um, you can look it up if you'd like. But yeah, I think it's super awesome. And I think it's it's my favorite explanation for who the knight, for who Cold Hands is that I've come across. So I, I, I quite enjoy that one. And I, I look forward to be told to, to being told that I'm I'm really stupid for thinking it. So th there's that. There's Cold Hands is the Night King. That's my surprise idea of the day for you. Now it's time to talk about Young Griff. So who the fuck is Young Griff? Let's start off with uh, what Varys tells us that Young Griff is um, the son of Rhaegar plus and Elia. It, it, let's just say Young Griff. YG for Young Griff. If any, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you haven't read the books. Um, <laughs> so, well, well, it's not just Varys who tells us this. It's also, you know, Tyrion. Tyrion uh, pieces it together. And then everyone's like, oh, yep, yeah, you got us. Um, and then he fucks around with their plans. It's it's fun. So, this is the canon, well, the, the presented idea that this dude is actually Aegon Targaryen, Rhaegar and Elia's son, who um, was supposedly uh, killed on, in the sack of King's Landing, but apparently, according to um, this conspiracy of folks, is, act is still alive. And um, was raised by Illyrio and... Uh, is going to be the king of Westeros and such because you know he's, he's he's great we've raised him to be great and um yeah 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 no they're full of shit aren't they <laughs> um I, I I don't see it fitting very well with what Gurm writes for this poor boy to have actually escaped and lived a life in secret, only to then, you know, rise up and become the the king as is in his, you know, to receive his proper inheritance. I think that that's not... A, that I, no. I don't think that's a thing George writes. Um, so, 
I'm not going to put it at no way because, you know, there's still some possibility. I do not like it, though. I would be upset if this was true, except I'm sure, here's the thing, all of these things I've said I don't like, I'm sure if George wants them to be true, he could, he, he, he has a way of doing it, you know, he's like that, isn't he? Um, so, that, actually, I'm, that goes a little higher, I don't hate it that much. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's that one, and... I think the biggest point in favor of uh, Young Griff actually being Rhaegar and Elias is, is that Ke um, Varys tells Kevin Lannister that that's who he is. And he says that to Kevin Lannister just before he kills him. So, if he's lying, why would he... Wh why lie to a dying man is the idea. And that's 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 a pretty good point to bring up. Um, there are counter arguments to that, that, um, you know, why tell the truth to a dying man? Why say anything to a dying man? Varys should have just stepped out of the status and shadows and said, oogie boogie boo, I'm a sexy little baby, and then just shot him dead in the, like, between the eyes, and it would have meant just as much as telling him that, uh, young Griff is actually Aegon Targaryen. Right, so, it, it's it's something, but it's also kind of nothing. And the other thing is, <clears throat> walls have ears, and Varys knows this. So, you got to be careful what you say. Even to a dying man. But you, so, yeah, there's that. Um, let's, who else could Young Griff be then? Um, so, so we've got a, a Young Griff Blackfire. This is probably the most popular theory because it's pretty good. Um, it, 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 it seems pr pretty pretty true that that um, this dude we've been told is a Targaryen is actually a Blackfire. Ooh boy. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the idea is that he's like the, the last Blackfire who who who, who uh, descended through the female line because. Uh, we're only told that the Blackfire line was ended in the male line when Barristan killed Maelys the Monstrous. And, um, so, yeah, okay, good. And he's gonna conquer the Seven Kingdoms, and the Golden Company will give him the sword Blackfire to prove his legitimacy, um, even though that kind of just proves that he's a Blackfire and not a Targaryen. And the other thing is that a lot of the people who seem to be supporting a, um, young Griff are historically Blackfire supporters. So, hmm, isn't that weird? So, yeah, I, I like it, and it's, it holds a lot of water. Uh, m maybe even over here. Yeah, okay, good, great. <laughs> um, furthermore, some people stipulate that not just Young Griff is a Blackfire, but um, that Varys is a Blackfire. Now, now this one, I, I, I don't hate this one either. Uh, now let me get it out of the hate quadrant. Let me move hate over here. There you go. Hey, hey, hang on. Whoa, I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> okay, Varus Blackfire. I do not hate it. Um, it seems less likely that we'd ever hear more about it, but I like it. Actually, you know what? That that shouldn't factor into it. How like however likely it is to be revealed, just how much how likely I think it is to be true. Um, yeah, Varus Blackfire. He, his his name, ooh, his name ends in Aris, and that's kind of Valyrian-ish. Hmm. No, I, I don't think that's a point in its face. I think it's just a name. We know that, like, the presented story is that he grew up in Essos, so I don't think that really means much. However, um, he does shave his head, and you've got to think, well, why is he doing that then? And... You know, this theory's answer to, to that is to hide the silver blonde hair, to hide the, the, the Valyrian hair, so that, um, you know, no one pieces together that he's a black fire. Um, well, or, or Valyrian at all, actually. <clears throat> and uh, it also offers an explanation for him being a eunuch. 
even though that's one of those things that doesn't necessarily warrant an explanation. A guy can just be a eunuch. You can't just ask someone why they're a eunuch. But this one's like, well, he was uh, gelded uh, to prevent further procreation of the Blackfire line. And some people think that the sorcerer who did it was Blood Raven. And, I, well, you know, the sorcerer's voice he hears, he, they think that that's Blood Raven. And I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and that, like, even though it's kind of like, it's kind of wacky and there's not too much to it. Um, yeah, I think it's cool. And it, it, it puts it higher up in my regard. It, it will, yeah. I think, I think that's, you know, it's, it's maybe not as likely as Young Griff being a black buyer. But I do like it. Maybe let's put it over here. And this one, maybe up here. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, maybe it's not as certain as something like Jojen Pace, though, right? Okay. Then, people go a little nuts with this one as well. People think that Varys is Young Griff's mother. So people think that Varys isn't actually a eunuch. Varys is a woman. And, uh, she's been lowering her voice to, to pose as a man so that she can infiltrate, uh, um, the court at King's Landing and influence politics. And it's like, mm okay. Then the thing is, there's nothing to discount this as far as I'm aware. Um... We, we we hear a lot about how feminine Varys is, but that being feminine doesn't mean you're a woman. Um, yeah, no, it's kind of just like, uh, like I I don't like it very much, but at the same time, there's not nothing I can do. <laughs> there's nothing I can really do to say no, no fucking way. Oh wow, people haven't heard this one. That's great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, Varys being Young Griff's mother, um, I can't do anything about it, but, but I hate it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think Varys being a eunuch is fine. I, I don't need for him to actually be a woman who has given birth to this boy, um, um, uh, and of course, the 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 other end of this is that Illyrio is the father. So, um, uh, do all you can to avoid picturing that. Hydration time. Okay. <clears throat> So that's that. Then we've got uh, more more young Griff shit, and that's um the 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 less memey um Illyrio. Uh, actually, how am I gonna phrase this? It's the one where um young Griff is Illyrio's son by Sarah. Uh, uh, let's just say Sarah Blackfire. Okay, so so this pairs up with um young Griff Blackfire. I, and I, I like it that, hang on, is that how you spell Sarah, or is it two, is it E-R-R? -R? I can't remember. Um, I, I think that, I, I'm going to put this basically with Varys Blackfire. I think they work quite well together. And I like the idea that, um, <laughs> God, I cannot look at chat, you guys. Um, so... This idea um, is that Varys and Sarah were brother and sister, and Illyrio married Sarah, had a son, and they would like to put that son on the throne now. Okay? So that's that idea. Um, it pairs well with everything else we've got going on. It's not as likely as just Young Griff being a Blackfire they picked up along the way, but it works in conjunction with it quite well. Um, it, it, it's emotionally resonant for me. With Illyrio pulling all these strings to put his son on the throne, like the son that he believes is that. You know, we don't hear too much about Sarah, but, I mean, she she's a woman who's um, not actually present in the story, so that's uh, par for the course at this point. Um, <laughs> George doesn't give us too much about the women who aren't actually present in the story. Um, 
in pretty much every regard. And 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 that's and that's a really good time to bring up Ashara. So some people think that Jon Snow is Ashara's Ashara Dane's son by Ned Stark. And they in f ah no <laughs> I don't like it I don't like it at all no 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 um I, in fact I, I I'm putting this I'm putting this down here uh get it away from me uh, um can I say that there's no way I, I I really do not think there's much of a possibility and also I hate it so I think that Ned actually being John's father. Um, yeah, no, I, I hate that, just, just on the face of it. So, so, th there's that. Um, Ashara being John's mother, that's not something I hate. That's, f that's okay. You can do that if you want. But, <laughs> but Ned actually being his father is, um, um, no, 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 no. I, I think it's actually quite important to both of their stories that Ned is not actually John's father. Um, that it's like this noble lie that he's had to tell this kid for his entire life, you know? I, I think that if you, if you take that away and Ned was actually, like, not lying about that the whole time and he was just kind of, like, not telling him about his mother and that's really all that he was doing, I think that that's just kind of a lot more shit and not as good. And so there's this, there's all this stuff that we know went down at Harren Hall, and mostly stuff that we don't like that we don't know happened. And people are like, ah, Ned and Ashara fell in love, and then um, there's also this notion that they eloped somehow, even though there's, I don't see any indication in the text for anything like that. Um, and, and then John is actually not only. The legitimate heir to Winterfell because um oh god B because so the idea is that they got married before Ned and Cat got married so Ned and Cat's marriage is illegitimate so um so John is the heir to Winterfell and also the heir to Starfall which I don't know why people make such a big deal about being the heir to Starfall it's a place we've never been to and it's a place that doesn't really get talked about much in the story People um, fantasize about it. They idealize it, and uh, I don't. Re I don't think it's that important. I think that um, the notion of being sword of the morning that's that's a thing, but being heir to Starfall, I don't. I don't see why that's important, and and that brings us to um, <clears throat> Brandon and Ashara being John's parents. I like. I hate this a lot less, because um. Because the, the whole thing about young Ned is that he's a sad emo boy who, 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 um, who, 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 um, can't, who's too shy to express his feelings to other people, is the impression that I get. And Brandon, in, star in stark contrast to that, do you see what I did there, um, is this brash... Uh, shoot first, ask questions later, kind of, um, uh, arrogant dude. And I think that it's far more likely that someone like him would have, uh, done the deed with old Ashara over there, and, and, and produced an heir, and then, well, not, not necessarily an heir, I still think that it's a bastard. I don't think that Ashara got married to either of them. Um... I, I don't think that any of this is true, actually. I don't, <laughs> but I, I like this a lot more than Ned being John's father. Uh, basically, by that, I give it. I give it more likelihood, um, but but it's still not very. No, I I still think it's it's probably most likely that Rhaegar and Lyanna are John's parents. Sorry to tell you, and other people think that um, either of these pairings could have produced Daenerys as well. And I, yeah, basically the same, same opinions of those ones. Okay, um, then we've got some more Ashara stuff. 
This is stuff that I hate a lot less. When I first heard these ideas, I was like, what? What are you talking about? No, 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 no. That's silly. But then I read into it, and you know what? I think that Howland Reed and Ashara Dane uh, being Mira and Jojen's parents is not the worst theory I've ever heard. So there you go. Um, I'm not... Hang on, we're, we're gonna move that, don't worry. Um, but yeah, so the idea is that Gianna Reed is a cope. There is no Gianna Reed. It's a Shara Dane. She eloped with Howland. Uh, they ran off together and, um, and, and it's kind of a princess in the frog type deal where she's a beautiful, uh, Dornish, uh, beauty. Uh, she's so beautiful that it worked to, it worked its way into her description twice and that he's a little frog man, um, who can't stand up straight and, and has, and has trouble breathing properly. I'm making all of this up, but in fact, all of this is made up. That's what fiction is. But the idea is that they then went on and, you know, had some babies, and that's Mira and Jojen. And that's why when Mira and Jojen tell the story of Harrenhal to Bran, which he hadn't heard before, by the way, um, they focus so much on Howland and Ashara. I don't know. Uh, that's something that some people pick up on. I'm not entirely sold on it. Um, but... It, it's the one of these Ashara theories that fits with the, um, with, with like the canon. It's not canon. Stop saying that. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that fits with this accepted idea that Rhaegar and Lyanna are John's parents. So, um, I, it, it's, I don't think it's unlikely. I think it's a good explanation for where she wound up. Um, a lot of people think that there's a much better explanation for where Ashara went, but I think that that's an okay one. I'm not too happy with it. I'm just gonna, I'm going to put it quite close to the center, honestly, because as far as um, people not being who they actually are, theories kind of go. Ah, uh, meh. You know, it's not, it's, it's not that silly. So uh, you kind of have to. Um, uh, reconcile this with Ashara committing suicide and uh yep fair enough that is a bit of an obstacle to the theory <laughs> um but but the theory so goes that um yeah that's that that didn't actually happen so actually you know what on reflecting that I I can't in all conscience put it in that quadrant it's gonna have to go kind of over here just because of the logistics of like figuring out how House Dane is gonna play along with that, and that's the thing about all these Dane theories is that we just don't know enough about them to um, make any claims about. Oh well, they did this because they wanted to preserve this relationship. They wanted to, uh, uh, and 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 Mira is gonna inherit Dawn, and it's like, huh. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, so that that's Ashara Dane, except that's not all of Ashara Dane, because some people think that Ashara is Shiera, is, uh, no, 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 it is Quaith. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Um, so I, I guess I'll put that one on, that, that one on the, on the board. Also, we've got, uh, Shiera is Quaith. So let's talk about these. Uh, who the fuck is Quaith? Good question. Um, I can tell you right now that um, I, I'm I'm more fond of Shiera being Quaith than Ashara being Quaith. I think, unfortunately, it's most likely that Ashara is another one of those off-screen women who is beautiful and then dies. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, I I don't think that it's Ashara. Some people think that Ashara is Daenerys's mother, runs away to to. Uh, um, become Quaith and helps her out later on, a and that that's the idea behind that one. And um, eh, eh, I don't hate it. It, it. I'm quite neutral on it actually. I just don't think it's very likely. Um, no, I think it's more likely than than that. So let's put that over there. Let's do it like that. Okay, but 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 but, but. 
she she a sea star being quaith now now that's a theory that that's one that that's that's one you can cut your teeth on because um Shiera and Blood Raven are like, you know, they're a couple, man. They come as a package. They they're a pair. You, you, you got Blood Raven, you got you got Shiera. So um Blood Raven is a spooky tree wizard in the frozen wastelands who's helping out our northern hero Bran Stark. Um and, and then you got Shiera, um a beautiful uh, uh gem living in the tropical paradise of... Okay, it's not a tropical paradise. But yeah, living in the heat of Karth, helping out our fiery hero, Daenerys. So, um... I, I don't give too much credence to, like, mirroring being, you know, evidence for theories. But it's not nothing. And I think that Blood Raven extending his life to become the Three-Eyed Crow... And Shiera extending her life somehow to become Quaith. You know, they're basically equivalent ideas. If we're willing to accept that Blood Raven is the Three Eyed Crow, which is canon, um, then I think that we can't immediately discount the idea that Shiera Sea Star is Quaith. I quite like this, and I think that it has merit and likelihood to it. Let's place it around here. Shiera Seastar, ladies and gentlemen. It turns out she's a person. Um, there's another crazy idea about who Shiera Seastar is. And it's crazy. <laughs> Let me tell you that. But I kind of love it. Uh, uh, and that is that Shiera, are you, on the, are, are you holding on to something, is Old Nan. And so the idea here is that um, they both went north to, um, you know, ch chase out this prophecy or whatever. Like, like Shiera followed Blood Raven when he was sent to the wall and, and lived, like, in, in, you know, probably Winterfell then if she's going to become old Nan. And um, the idea is that Blood Raven foresaw that they would be needing to help a hero called Brandon Stark. And so Shiera installed herself, you know, became a wet nurse in Winterfell or whatever. And then. But because they expected a Brand Stark to be coming along. And then there was. A, because there's always a Brand Stark. There's always Brand Starks going around. But it so happened that the Bran Stark that Shiera installed herself in Winterfell to be a wet nurse for is, um, w was the wrong Bran Stark. They were too early. They were a generation or two or three too early. So, um, then when the actual Bran of our story comes along, um, she, she, that's why, like, all of these crazy stories she tells him, which all seem to be pretty legitimate um she she's helping him out she's training him she's like the initial trainer for like she, she's the initiator for blood raven's training it's 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 fucking wacky but it's awesome as well <laughs> um so yeah i love that one and uh then so but but then there's this also this um she says to never trust crows, and uh, the the Reddit thread I I read concerning this theory pointed out that that could be um, her bitterness towards Blood Raven for being wrong about um, how long she would have to wait at Winterfell. Um, so so th there's that. Shiera Seastar being old Nan is. One of those just crazy theories that the more you think about is like, well, hang on, <laughs> maybe. Um, it, I don't see it as being as likely as uh, as Quaith by a long shot. Um, I'm gonna put it over here. I like it. I like it a lot. It's probably more likely than that, to be honest. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's put it there. 
Actually, no. The way I've been raving about it, it belongs up here. And let me put this one up here, actually. There we go. Alright, who else do we have? Um. Oh boy. Oh, I forgot about these theories. Here we go. Alright, everyone. You ready? We've got Mance Raider is Rhaegar Targaryen. Now, um, no, he's not. I hate it and, and no. And, and the main reason for that is, first of all, Mance Raider has an established history. He, <laughs> he's been in the Night's Watch for ages and then, then defected to before becoming King Beyond the Wall. Like, he's not just this wildling that came out of nowhere. Um, Corrin Halfhand knew him. Uh, but, but then, then there's, oh, but, but wait. Uh, you think Corrin Halfhand, uh, knowing him, uh, is a counter-argument? Well, no, he's actually Arthur Dane. So, so, of course he would lie about no, no, no. Stop. Don't. Don't do this to yourself. There's nothing going on here. Mance is a father figure to John, yeah, but also Rhaegar Targaryen is fucking dead. Arthur Dane is fucking dead. <laughs> um, uh, no, 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 no. Stop doing this. And then I think there's some theory that works Gerald Hightower in as well. Hang on, let me look into it. Um, hang on, what what is it? Um, oh, so this one says that Mance Raider is Arthur Dane, Tormund is Gerald Hightower, and the Half Hand is Oswald Went. Uh, uh, it's Oswald, by the way. Um, and huh? No, stop doing this. These people. Why do you want fewer characters in the story? Okay, no, that, that's that's enough hyperbole for that. Um, but no, um, I, I I don't I don't think any of this is true. And let me let me just hang on. I'm gonna characterize all of this actually. Well, uh, sorry, I'm breaking Photoshop all of a sudden. In, instead of all that, I'm just gonna write um, Kingsguard at the wall. Actually, beyond the wall. Uh, so so that that's um that's uh bringing up all of these. Um, Ideas that the Kingsguard from the Tower of Joy uh, live uh, uh, all all went up there for some reason. <laughs> You'd think that if these people made it, like were at the wall ever, we'd have heard about them, and and then if they were beyond the like. It, it, it's commonly accepted that these people are dead. Robert killed like he he knows that that was Rhaegar he killed. I I I don't think that there's room in the story for Rhaegar to not be dead. And I think that's probably the biggest obstacle here. The the second biggest of course is that Mance isn't nobody. He he was somebody before he became the king beyond the wall. As was Tormund, as was I mean Corrin Halfhand. As yeah, there's a bit of history there. Um, yeah, no, these are these are all just people. You don't need to make them Kingsguard or Targaryens or anything like that. You don't. There's no no. It's it's okay. You don't need to do this. All right, calm down. There's there's it. They're, they're all just. That they're all who they are, okay? I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so then we've got um. Um. Hmm. Who else am I gonna? What, what are we gonna talk about now? There's a lot of theories in here that I haven't touched yet. I'm just. You know, let's go back to the top of the list and just start going down. So we've got, this one's fun. Um, we've got Storm's End is a nuclear plant. 
So, this one kind of ties in with uh, the, the Prestony Jacoby kind of idea that um, A Song of Ice and Fire is post apocalyptic science fiction, uh, where a bunch of these structures that we run into are hyper advanced technological wonders that have been lost to time, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And. Well, I, I guess I kind of have to address that bigger idea first. So, uh, um, A Song of Ice and Fire. It Actually, let's do it all caps. It looks better in all caps. A Song of Ice and Fire is... Uh, shall we say post-apocalyptic? Yeah, let's say post-apocalyptic. Poc apocalyptic. you got to sound it out, kids. Um, that doesn't need to be a capital. Okay, there we go. A Song of Ice and Fire is post-apocalyptic. Now, what do I think of that? It's a pretty big idea that has a lot of implications. It'd be pretty uh, unfair of me to dismiss it outright, and that's why I'm not going to, because I don't think it's instantly dismissible. I think that there's... Uh, th there's lots of weird shit going on in this world. And I think that this explanation is not a terrible one. Um, a Song of Ice and Fire being post-apocalyptic. Mm. It's a big one to crunch on. I'll think about it as I sip from my bottle of water. Lemon Gate is not more likely than Jojen Pace. That's not... Oh, I am. Yes, it, I have put it there. Um, oh, oh, okay, sorry. So the explanation for that was... um, it, It's not like... Well, yes, it is actually. Because lemon trees do not grow in Bravos. And that's made a point of several times throughout the story. Regardless of the implications of it... Yes. Lemon Gate is... Definitely true. I'm not going to say it's canon, because if it's canon, we're not going to talk about this. Okay, Storm's End is a nuclear... Um, uh, okay, back to the post-apocalyptic thing. Um, uh, do I think that it... Um, I, I'm not going to... Something I really like about Preston Jacobs is that whenever he says an idea, he, <laughs> he says, yeah, maybe not, though. Right... It, it, it's all just him uh, analyzing the story and giving his best shot at a lot of the times just giving a fun um, explanation for why he thinks all these things are, uh, are strange and I think that's great and I, I, I'm, I'm going to basically I, I really don't hate the idea I think it's I think it's a good idea in, in fact, the story presented us uh, to us is that there was an apocalypse. The Long Night was an apocalypse, and humanity lived through it, and we're living after it. So the story we're being told is post-apocalyptic. That much is f true. That that that's canon, actually. So, <laughs> so th there's that. It's not even really a word game I'm playing there. It's just true. Um, there was an apocalypse, and we, we're after it. That's what post-apocalyptic means. So there's that. But generally when people say this is that they mean that there was um, a g more advanced civilization that was destroyed by an apocalypse, and we're living after that fall. And that also seems pretty true, because... Look at the Eerie. Look at Storm's End. Look at the wall. Look at Casterly Rock. There is no way that these things could have been built by a society that is exactly the same as the one that we see in the story. The society we see in the story produces places like the Red Keep. It produces places like the Twins. It produces places like, I don't know... Um, is High Garden that remarkable? It's big, <laughs> but these things are wondrous. They're incredible. Storm's End uses engineering that is kind of 
in our own society pretty remarkable. So th there's there's something here. There, a lot of people explain this like, yeah, well, they used magic to make those things. Um, specifically, the wall is is what that's and like, yeah, sure, if, yeah, of course, you, that's a thing, but that still falls in line with a society using techniques that have been lost to time, probably due to an apocalypse. And yeah, there's an interpretation that there is no magic in this story. That's its own thing. In fact, I don't think anyone actually submitted that, which is interesting. So um, I'm, I'm going to say, yes, A Song of Ice and Fire is post-apocalyptic. That, that's... It's 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 base it's true. <laughs> now, as for the idea that Storm's End is a nuclear plant, um, uh, it 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 has the the smooth um construction of one, I suppose. Um, is there anything more to this one? Um, no, it just says it looks like one with one big thick tower, and um, no, uh, I. I, uh, no, I, I think it's a castle. <laughs> uh, I, and I don't like it that much either. I, I think it... Nah. So so there's that one. So there we go. I, there, are, there are a few ways you can interpret the term post-apocalyptic, but I think under this... Uh, uh, through what I've described, placing it as definitely is like... Uh, is probably right of me to do. Um, okay. Who's next? Aha. A favourite of mine. Tyrek. <laughs> I don't know. We've just gone from something so broad and all-encompassing and, and, like, world-affecting as everything's post-apocalyptic. There was an ancient society that constructed all of these wondrous buildings and everything we know is an elaborate lot and it's like okay Tyrek you know Tyrek Lannister yeah he's a horse <laughs> so um a few people are horses it turns out <laughs> uh, so <laughs> some people obsess over what happened to this kid this poor kid Tyrek Lannister some people are like oh Peter has him other people are like well Varys has him and of course um, the the greatest interpretation of this submitted by um, by by someone who who I I, I deeply cherish um, is that Tyrek is a horse because in a Clash of Kings I think it's a Clash of Kings um, it is written Tyrek was last seen a horse when the press of mob um, broke the line of gold cloaks so. It says right there that Tyrek was a horse. Um, so that's definitely true. Tyrek is a horse. I think it's likely that someone's probably named a horse Tyrek at some point in time. And um, I, I'm terribly sorry to do this, but I, 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 I... Generally, for people to become animals, there needs to... Like, I, I expect some kind of magical impetus. So, a, a, as... As compelling as this theory is, um, we love it, of course. I just can't... I can't in all conscience put it anywhere other than there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Now, we, we have Drogo is a horse. Actually, you know what? This theory is not complete without the hashtag. Drogo is a horse. Um, uh, someone's already made the connection. Yeah, Tyrek is Drogo. They're both the same horse. So, this is my... Um, my patented blood magic theory that um Miri was fucking around with souls and uh took the took the horse soul and put it in the drogo body and that's why the drogo body can't do anything and uh yeah yeah yep yeah. um i i think i like this and i think it's true and that's why i said it in those videos all those years ago 
How did Stannis know where the wildlings were? He arrived at Eastwatch. Um, Drogo is a horse. Um, I, I, I like it, obviously. Now, I'm not going to say that it's definitely true. That'd be pretty silly of me. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I do do enjoy me a Drogo as a horse. Um, I, and I guess implied in all of this is my ideas about Miri uh, fuckling around with all of those souls and uh, br bring in bring in up the uh, the the king soul into the dragon eggs. I should probably put that elsewhere, but maybe we'll talk about that some other time. No one submitted it, I don't know. Um, yeah, Drogo's a horse. Um, we we like Drogo's a horse around here. Um, if if a theory has been submitted and it is a legitimate theory, it will be discussed. Do not worry. Maybe not today. Uh, oh, we've, we've done Shiera Seastar's Quaith. Okay, here we go. We've got the Northern Conspiracy. Grand Northern Conspiracy. Ooh. Okay, so there's this idea that a bunch of Northern houses... Uh, like, not loyal to the Boltons? And not playing along with their rule over the North? Huh. Crazy. Um, yeah, so... I think it's basically a given that there's some Northern conspiracy going on. We basically already know that, um, nobody likes the Boltons and a bunch of people are planning stuff against them. Um... But this idea posits that they're all working together to bring about a new Stark regime of the North. And um, that I don't see as <clears throat> being very likely. Because people working together to achieve a common goal is not, not, not a very common theme across the story. Um, people people working against each other even when their interests should be aligned now that's something that occurs a lot in the story and I, I i think that that's what's going on here i don't think there's one grand northern conspiracy i think there's a few i think there's a few lesser northern conspiracies to you know for everyone to get what they personally want so I, i'm gonna change this to conspiracies and say, yeah, there's definitely something going on there. Um, th there absolutely is. Like, like, f I don't see any possible way where none of these people are trying to do anything. I don't think that that's a thing. So, yeah, there's a Grand Northern Conspiracy going on. Well, I don't know if I could call it Grand. I think I'd have to call it, um, like, it it's definitely not unified. This is messy. This is George we're talking about. This is... The state of the North at the end of A Dance with Dragons is nuts. It's completely whack. So, to, to posit that there's some unified uh, conspiracy of Northern Houses to accomplish anything is kind of... I, I want to say naive. Um, but, you know, it, it, it could be true that there that there's, like... I think that there is a common goal of getting rid of the Boltons, okay? And then from there, everyone's interests um, split as, as you get deeper into the minutiae. Yeah, yes, yeah, good one. There's Grand Northern Conspiracies, yep. it's it. There's definitely something, and I like that there's something. Um, now, I think when people say Grand Northern Conspiracy... A lot of people mean something quite specific, and a lot of people don't mean something specific at all. So I I, I can't really work with with like there, there's so many fucking different ideas around here. Um, oh yeah, we can talk about Frey pies. Um, that that um that happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happened. I think it's quite likely that that happened. Um, now. I haven't put it up on the on the likey bit because here's the thing. Um, it's it's quite stupid to to do that now. 
I shouldn't put it up here. I, I, it's a good beat for the story. It's a, it's a, it, it's a very gummy thing to do. It fits perfectly. And uh, what I don't like is that uh, is that Mandalay did it. I think uh, it'd be smarter to not do it. Um, so yeah, um, that that's what I'm talking about here. Um, maybe I should just put it next to Grave Digger. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Good times. Oh, now that's a that's a that's one we can talk about. We've got Melisandre, you know the 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 sexy red lady. Um, wait, hang on. Let's do it like this. Blood Raven plus Shiera Sea Star is Melisandre. Um, let's get rid of the spaces because they'll just take up too much space. Okay, so this one is um. Yeah, uh, cannibalism is not okay. It turns out. Um, Blood Raven and Shiera Sea Star is uh Melisandre. Um. I, I don't I don't really like this, um, and I don't really have a reason. <laughs> um, there's nothing really against it. Um, I think all we know about Melisandre is that she's older than she looks, but that doesn't mean that she's too old for um. That she's too old to be Blood Raven or Shiera's daughter, um, but she, but like Melanie Lot Seven, yeah, a shy, yeah, mm, I, I don't quite see it fitting. And also, when you examine her purpose, she's been helping Stannis, but I, I guess in turn that did in, end up helping John. Because when people suggest this, it's like an idea that she's a thrall of Blood Raven, uh, that's been like planted to accomplish things that he wants, and you know, yeah, hmm. I think it's more fun if she's just acting um, on what she, as her own person, perceives to be the word of God. I think that that's more fun. Uh, um, then again, um, a lot of people say that. Blood Raven is what a lot of people perceive to be the word of God. So, you know, there's 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 something here. I I just I'm just not particularly fond of it. Um, I I can't really dismiss it one way or the other, um, based on any evidence or lack thereof. I mean, the lack thereof speaks for itself. But there's also nothing pointing me in a different direction to explain where Melisandre came from. I think she's just a person. Um, you know, sometimes people become religious zealots, <laughs> and that's just that. Um, not everyone, it turns out, is being mind-controlled by their secret daddy. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of it, and I, I, I don't see it being very likely. I'm not going to put it all the way in the corner. In fact, it, it can go maybe around here. I definitely hate it less than Mance equals Rhaegar and all that. In fact, that I wish I could put that lower. But there's other theories I dislike. In fact, I think I hate that more than more than Tyrion Targ. Yeah, let's put that there. Okay, so that means I can put that there. All right, very good. <laughs> okay, so oh, and then um. Someone also submitted an interpretation that Melisandre is the is the bleeding star. Uh, hang on, do I need to? Uh, people just send me links to forum posts, and it's like I don't, I don't have the time for all that. Um, the red star of the Azor Ahai prophecy. Okay, I think it's time to talk about Azor Ahai and prophecy and all that shit. You know, let's do it. Now this is going to be really difficult to put on the board. Because it's quite complicated, um, and there's a lot there's a lot of moving parts here. But let's see what we can do. A lot of people submitted. Um, John is Azora High. Daenerys is Azora High. Jamie is Azora High. Um, you know, prince that was promised. Uh, this person is the bleeding star. This sword is Lightbringer, and I think that most of them are true. I think most of them are right in some capacity because here's the thing. 
prophecy is kind of bullshit. You hear a prophecy, um, Marwin tells it best. He like prophecies, it's 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 kind of bullshit. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that there's any one Azora High. I don't think that there's one Lightbringer. I don't think there's one, uh, hero. I don't think, I, I think that Three Heads of the Dragon may occur several times in the story. I think that this Prince That Was Promised idea can be ticked by a, like that, those boxes can be ticked by a lot of different, uh, situations. I think you're all right and by that, by that, I also mean that you're all wrong. I think that all of this is 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 all true and also bullshit. Am I making any sense? I, th it's, um, you know, people debate over. Okay, so Stannis fits all of these criteria, and Jon fits all of these criteria, and Daenerys fits all of these. So which one of them is Azor Ahai? And the answer is... They all are! <laughs> uh, um, maybe Stannis is a bit more complicated than that. I, I, I think it's all a bit more complicated than that, and I think that's the point. I think the point is that prophecy influences people... The way that any information influences people. I don't think that there is any genuine foretelling of the future. I think it's forces trying to manipulate people into seeing things they want to happen. Yeah, it's an archetype. It's an in-story archetype. It's not just like, a in, you know, in our world, this idea of a hero that saves things. Uh, the, 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 it's come from a special place and they're going to ride on a unicorn or slide down a rainbow playing an electric guitar. And and then, then David Bowie's going to come back to life and kiss them on the lips. And it's like, well, no, it's an in-world archetype of of the last hero, Azora High, the prince that was promised... It, it it's you know it's all there <laughs> um so I, I i think that any of these all the people all of you that submitted john is as or high daenerys is as or high you're you're right you're also wrong that's how i think that's how i that's what i make of all of this um now what I've done here, I've put an opinion on there, and not really a theory. Um, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how how to um how to um. Ooh, hang on, I must ban a person from chat. Unfortunate. Um. Okay, cool. Weird. Where's that come from? Um. Okay, so. Can I repeat everything you just joined? Uh, no. Um. So, people who have joined late may see Lemongate in the top right and think, now what's going on here? I, um, it's more complicated than that, believe me. <laughs> so, I, I'm not entirely sure what to put um, for, for all the stuff I just said. Uh, everyone is Azora High. You get to be Azora High. Um, <laughs> look under your seats. Um, how do I phrase that? Hmm. I'll have to think on that one. Anyway. Um, this one says Heartsbane is Lightbringer. And, and, and just like... Just, just as I said, um, all of these swords being Lightbringer, um, yep, 
sure could be could be i i I think we'll see as as the story winds up we'll see a lot of um ideas that well uh situations that can fit the azora high nissa nissa no scope 360 um light bring a headshot so yeah heartsbane could be lightbringer long claw could be lightbringer blackfire could be like the valyrian steel dagger could be lightbringer the knight's watch could be lightbringer the dragons could be lightbringer i think all of these things may be lightbringer and by maybe i don't mean oh there's a chance i mean in world th- there is a way to argue that any of these things are Lightbringer. I'm not saying that, well, this might end up being the the thing that the prophecy is talking about. I mean, there is a way to interpret... Th- there is a... Whoa, what was that? There is a not bullshit way of interpreting that these things are each Lightbringer. You know, that all of these people are each Azora High. I think I've talked about this one enough however i must stipulate that of all of the people who can be azora high it is hot pie um okay so our next one here is (laughs) that jane was never pregnant this is jane westerling we're talking about here um not Jane Poole. Uh, Jane Poole, as far as we know, was never pregnant. But, um... Uh, yeah, so this one... <clears throat> I believe this one integrates Sibel Spicer uh, working with Tywin to prevent Rob from producing an heir. I think that's the idea here. Um, yeah, so... Some people think that Jane Westerling is pregnant with Rob's heir. Other people think that she was and now isn't. Other people think that she never was. And I guess this is that third camp. But it's also paired with a she's not pregnant because of deception rather than um, she's not pregnant because sometimes you don't get pregnant. Um, uh, so, yeah, there you go. So, Sibel Spicer does say, yeah, nah, she's not pregnant and I did something about that. So... That, yep, yeah, that, that, she's definitely said that. <laughs> she, she could, she could be full of shit, though. She doesn't seem like she is, though. Uh, so, yeah, p- probably. Unfortunately, I, th- I would like to see a little Rob running around. I like Rob, and, and him having a son would be cute. But also, um, I, it, we are told by someone who I don't think we have any reason to doubt that um, she did everything in her power to prevent that from happening. So, and then we have people saying that Jane is 100% pregnant. I don't know what it would be like to be 75% pregnant, but I'm not entirely interested in finding out what that would look like. (laughs) So... Sibel tells us that sh- that she did that, but is she full of shit, or did she fail? Also, how long ago did Rob die? It was before the year. It was before the year three hundred, not too long before though. And then the story at the end of A Dance with Dragons in the Riverlands. Um, is there still room? I believe there is still room. But, but you would definitely see if she was pregnant by this point, right? Yeah. Nah, nah I, 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 I don't think we'll see a, I don't think we'll see a Rob Air. Now, never pregnant, I'm not entirely sold on. I think that there's a chance she was and Sibel intervened with an ongoing pregnancy. But either way, I'm not... You know, I, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really love it or hate it. I think it's just a thing. 
Uh, I'm definitely less enthusiastic about it than Garion being the Shadow Lord, so let's put it maybe down here. I, I don't really care. I don't hate it. But I'm, uh, I don't really give a crap. Um, we've got... Oh, now this this is a this is a good one. We all we all like talking about the others. Others aren't evil. And this one is that they're misunderstood. They're not the bad guys. Um, the, the the story will end with a white piece. A lot of people uh, sent this in as a prediction that there will be a white piece between the others and humanity. And I'm I. By the way, I'm just typing new theories in over here because it's the biggest blank space we have. The biggest blankest space. Yeah, so, um... Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. I don't think the others are evil. Now, I, I think there is slight room in the story for the others to actually be evil monstrous ice demons i think that's an extremely slim chance but you know they do they, they are nasty <laughs> they, they kill people and and like that doesn't mean they're evil because you know animals kill people and like animals aren't evil evil uh requires a framework of morality to make a judgment on that kind of thing um but i believe the my belief is the others are sentient enough to have morality and that killing people is probably necessary to you know see their fucking species survival i don't know um but yeah i i think that so so they're probably not good I think they're probably like humans in that they do evil things when they think they have to. Um, and they probably do have to at this point is what I'm getting at. So, yeah, I, I like that. Others aren't evil. That seems pretty true to me that um, they're, it's way more complicated than they're just being these spooky ice monsters. Who who are gonna, who 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 hide under your bed and and eat your feet when you're sleeping, and and put them back on before you wake up, ooh that'd be dastardly, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. So I I'm I I buy into the idea that um the others is an ironic name, that it's it's George playing with the idea of otherizing, uh you know groups that you're not a part of, and uh demonizing them literally and perceiving them to be monstrous when really they aren't i think that's what's going on here okay then we have uh, another idea that at first glance looked related to me but actually wasn't um so this is the others are very evil <laughs> um so so I, I don't know where this idea came from um, and let me just quickly. So this is submitted by Fire from the Discord. Um, yeah, so we've got. I'm not sure how to summarize this one. Uh, let's say White Walker feast. It's kind of like a prediction, isn't it? White Walker feast. Uh, mm, no, I don't, hmm. Others, uh, uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't think being super evil is a part of this theory. I think it's just an, another, like, notion of fucked up survival, I guess? So the idea is that, um, the, the, the ruler of the others, who I guess we're calling the Great Other, um, is an ancient creature whose goal it is to sustain its own life indefinitely by feasting on the souls of men. Okay, so the idea is that every person that an other kills, and maybe whites as well, um, gets consumed by the great other. 
making the person a husk of what they are. And maybe that's how they become whites, is that their soul is drained by this great other thing. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I think it's from some... <laughs> Reading is so much fun. Okay, so so the the conceptual idea here is that humanity has to band together to defeat, uh, uh, and whoops, that's Discord to defeat a force that is ultimately, uh, selfish, and consuming. I think I've got that right. Selfish and manipulative. Okay. And that's in contrast to the show where the, the, the Night King is, like, the least involved antagonist imaginable. So, I think, yeah, I, I think others are very evil is a good way of summarizing that in the end. So, what do I think of it, though? Um, I don't hate it. I think it's, I think it's kind of cool. But, but also... Uh, I think that the evil that George poses against humanity is the evil that humanity possesses itself. I don't think that he has to invent some supernatural, uh, you know, godlike, magic y evil for humanity to have to band against. I think that, yeah, yeah, the, the forces of evil that we have to overcome are within ourselves. I think that that's what George is all about. So. This idea is cool, but I don't think it fits with the story we're being told. So I, I, I'm, I will have to put it down here. But know that it's not because I don't like the idea. I think that that's cool, but I don't think it fits. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Um, well, that's that's really stupid. This person suggested that there was a Joffrey Daenerys switch. They were switched at birth, and, and we know this because Joffrey is blonde and likes to cause chaos. <laughs> um, and, and we never see Joffrey take fire damage. <laughs> um, Aerys's dying wish to Jaime is that he rescue his children. So Jamie went to Dragonstone following the sack and took in a young Joffrey as his own. Who who you assume like Rayella must have just given birth to. But the issue here, of course, is that Joffrey is much younger. Than... <laughs> uh, isn't Joffrey like two years younger? Oh, that's funny though. It's good. Um, okay, so this one's cool. We've got um, much like how Beric is a champion of uh, Relor, Davos is a champion of the Faith, and, and 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 we don't mean this in like the um, the trial by combat sense of champion, where he's going to fight against someone in particular uh, about the Faith uh, of the of the Faith. Uh, it, it's just like, you know, living life as a champion of faith. And the thing is, this is really interesting because Davos doesn't present himself as an extremely pious man or a very faithful... Uh, he, he's not obsessed with the gods. Um, he, he doesn't... I mean, you know, he, he thinks about them probably more than most other POVs, but he, he's not obsessed with them. He's, um, you know, he doesn't live his life constantly thinking about what would please the gods most or how best to live a, you know, be virtuous and so on. He's, he's more pragmatic than that. And I, the reason I like this is that that's kind of, that, that might be the point. That might be what George is getting at about this kind of religion where um it's not about fighting for the gods it's about fighting for oh what the fuck am i trying to say so um 
Beric defends... What does Beric do? <laughs> He's a cool dude who has an eye patch in the show. He doesn't have an eye... Does he have an eye patch in the book? I know that, like, he he, he, he does get stabbed in the eye. But I... I can't... I don't, I don't remember. I don't think he does have an eye patch. Yeah, so... The, the reason I think this is cool is that... Um... He doesn't think that he's a champion of the faith. He just lives the life. Um, he does what he thinks is right, doesn't he, Davos? I think that's basically it. That and that might that might be the point. Hmm. The thing is, I don't think that Davos's story is all too interested in talking about the faith I, I I guess you could say it 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 makes a point of contrasting a bunch of religions and um there's a point about deifying political figures in Stannis but eh, eh, I, I don't think there's too much here I think it's cool but there's just not very much going on here, I don't think. It's not bad. I just... Maybe I just don't get it. I just don't get it, man. Okay, so this one's... This is a reference. It's not really a theory or a prediction or interpretation. It's kind of like a... Just an observation between Hal and Reed and, and Hal's moving castle. Um, so... Yeah. Um... Howland Reed has a moving castle <laughs> and his name is Howland Reed and it, that seems like George is doing a thing where, where you know he, it's like oh it's Hal is a moving castle how about that um yeah so I think that's a cute little reference I don't think it has much bearing on the story and this person has, <laughs> um, th th their theory is that he literally is the same character, that Howland Reed is literally the same person from the movie, Howl's Moving Castle. Um, and, mm, no, I, no, un I don't think so, unfortunately. I think that'd be cute. But nah. Uh, how am I gonna write this? Uh, Hal and Reed equals Hal. Let's just say that it's cute. I kind of like it, but nah. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no way. I mean, it's all in George's head. If he goes, if he comes out and says, "Yeah, um, it, it Hal and Reed is literally, um, Hal from Hal's Moving Castle." Um. I don't know if it'd be about the... I haven't read the book. I don't know if there's much difference between the book and the movie. I didn't know there was a book, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, who's next? That one looks big. I'm getting hungry. We might have to stop soon. How long have we been going? Two hours 40? I wonder if I can hold on 20 minutes. Pull off the full three hours. That'd be... That'd be pretty bonzerific. You know what? It's hydration time. Uh, while I look for the next theory I want to talk about. Oh, we missed a pink letter. Pink letter. Gurm. Gurm wrote the pink letter. Um, this is true, but I hate it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, that's stupid. You guys are stupid submitting all kinds of silly little theories like that. Okay. Um, let's go with a, with a production theory. Uh, some people submitted ideas about, um, you know, the actual real world publishing of the books and the process of writing them and, and, and ideas about what Gurm is doing. 
and, and some of them are really stupid, but some of them, you know, have water. And and this one's really funny, uh, 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 and I wanted to laugh at it. This one is um um the winds of winter and a dream of spring at the same time, like published on the same day. And this is, huh? I beg your pardon? Yeah, no, that, no, that, don't be silly. Uh, no, 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 no. It, he would, th this would never happen. I don't, I don't see. Now, J George has lied to us before. Um, but I don't think he would lie about. I mean, I, I guess there's there's nothing to suggest that he wouldn't lie about um, still working on the winds of winter, but I I I I, I trust him too much. I think, um, <laughs> yeah, it it, it seems it, it's it's quite the cope, isn't it? Luckily, they submitted it with um, oh no, they had a confidence of five out of five, um, so. There you go. Production. Um. What else have we got? Uh. Yeah, I'm just trying to find what I was looking at, looking for earlier. Uh, no, uh, um, nah. <laughs> um, man, so many people just submitted Lemon Gate. It's like, give me more than that, man. Um, oh, this one. Okay, here's one that some people actually legitimately believe. Um, John isn't dead. It's Tormund. So some people think that the John that died at the, whoops, the John that died at the end of A Dance with Dragons wasn't actually Jon Snow. It was Tormund, glamoured by by Melisandre. The I think the idea is, and um, that's um, oh, it might it's might not be the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but oh, it's close. Um, yeah, no, Jon Snow died. Um, he's dead. Or at least dying at the <laughs> as of the end of his last chapter, um, and and the reason we know that is that the chapter is from his point of view, and <laughs> and it's continuous from before uh, the the mutiny to during the mutiny to the aftermath of the mutiny where he's dying. Um, and, and there's nothing in there that suggests that that, that that he's been replaced by a glamoured Tormund. And also he thinks, stick him with the pointy end, he says ghost. That's John. This is really stupid. I, I, do people actually think this? <laughs> no fucking way. And also I hate it that... Um, because could you imagine if the winds of winter began and it turned out that it was Tormund? How do people think that would be good? Ah, uh, I don't know, man. People are so weird with their crazy ideas about who did what. Um, so yeah, that's that's that one. Okay, so we've got oh ah yes. Theon Kinslayer. This is um, the idea that the Miller's boys that Theon killed in place of Bran and Rickon uh, are his children, or at least one of them is his child. Um, and he says that he'd been boning the Miller's wife, and uh, then he... I know that it's two boys that he killed, and you'd probably dwell on that a little, like, regardless of their relation to you. You'd probably dwell on that a little bit, but uh, he thinks about it a lot, and then 
he's called a kinslayer. Was it the the um the, the hooded man that called him the kinslayer? Hang on, let me let me uh just make sure I'm right about that. Um, because I don't I don't want to I don't want to say that and be wrong. I'm fine with being wrong about most things, but not this. <laughs> uh, hang on, let me just check the word kinslayer in Theon chapters from A Dance with Dragons. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah. Okay, so two people call him a kinslayer in a dance with dragons, at least from what I just saw. Um, one being the hooded man, the other one being I think it's Rowan. Um, the spear wife and uh, in the case of Rowan um, Theon's like I didn't I'm not a kinslayer and then Rowan says yeah I know the Starks aren't brothers to you so she like knows that that's what he thinks she's talking about um, but she still seems rather um, you know sold on the idea that he is a kinslayer and then the hooded man a lot of people think that the hooded man is I didn't actually get many hooded man theories either. Um, a lot of people think that the hooded man is um, a projection of Theon's subconscious, and 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 so that would be Theon telling himself that he's a kinslayer. So th there's there's that, and beyond that, I think it's just pretty gum for a for a dude to accidentally kill his own son. I you know, he just chucks that in his stories every every so often as a treat. I think this is pretty likely and I like uh, I mean it's either way really um I like it. Let's put it here. I can't say that it's definite because I mean there's there's Maybe I should, because he says he was... Whoa, he says he was boning them, and then he's called a kinslayer later on. And it's like, well, why else would those things happen? Especially, Rowan knows that the Starks aren't brothers to him, so... You know, what's going on there? Yeah, Theon Kinslayer. De yeah, he, yeah. Dude killed his own son. Fucked up. Okay, so we've got... Aha! Ooh! Uh -huh. how, how did this one slip by me for so long? We've got Oberyn poisoned Tywin. Of course. Um, very, very popular theory. Um, so the idea here is that um, Oberyn was planning on assassinating Tywin and um, then going on trial for that crime and, uh, and, and fighting the mountain there and then. So... Oberyn's reputation as a poisoner really plays into this, and uh, Tywin died uh, on, on the shitter, <laughs> avoiding himself, uh, as it were. Um, I think there's signs of him being ill previous to this. They had breakfast once together, Oberyn and Tywin, where it could have happened. A and so the idea is that Tyrion killed a dying man. And... Um, and Oberyn's initial plan was to fight the mountain for that reason. And so, yes, I think that Oberyn did poison Tywin, and I like it. And, and whoa, let's do that again. Um, so the reason I like this is it explains something, and the thing that it explains is... Um, Oberyn's like overall plan. Hang on, I can't say definitely. I just I I, I like it. Hang on, let's put it maybe here. I quite like it actually. Actually, maybe even up here. Yeah, that's how much I like it. So um, we've got yeah. When when Oberyn arrives in King's Landing, he says that he seeks justice against. Gregor Clegane. At least I'm pretty sure he says it in in, in like as few so few words, and then 
but the thing is, Gregor Clegane is not in King's Landing when he does when he gets there, and there's no reason for Gregor Clegane to come to King's Landing. There's a like, there's a war going on, and Gregor Clegane is a part of that war. He's fighting in the war. So why does Oberyn think that he'll have the chance to kill Gregor, Gregor Clegane in King's Landing? And so that's what leads me to think that. Um, his plan was to kill Tywin, get caught, demand a trial, kill Gregor. I th- that I think that adds up quite a lot to me. And then just when Ch- Tyrion was um was accused of Joffrey's murder, he jumped onto that. Um, as you know, well, maybe he he th- he genuinely believed that Tyrion was innocent. And wanted to defend him, but I think the ulterior motive. I mean, it's quite obvious. I think he basically says that the ulterior motive is that he wants to fight Gregor. So yeah, he he always wanted to do that, but he didn't have an opportunity to do it until there was a trial by combat going on. So I, I think he came to King's Landing with the idea that he would go on trial for killing Tywin. And some people were like, well, hang on, he wanted a confession out of Tywin before Tywin died. And I think, no, I don't think that was important to him. He seems convinced of Tywin's guilt already. And I think humiliating Tywin is already, you you know, having him shit himself to death (laughs) is pretty humiliating. Um, So, yeah, I I, I do think Oberyn poisoned Tywin. But then the weird thing is that Tywin's corpse uh, doesn't, hang on, what is it? Yeah, it smells. It stinks. It smells fucking awful. Even though the maesters did the thing where they well they embalmed him basically, and he still he still stinks. And I I think that that's irrelevant. I don't think that that's part of this. I think that's just Gurm um, telling us about Tywin's rotten soul or something like that. I I don't think that really plays into whether or not he was poisoned. Alright, this might be our last one, whatever our next one is. Oh, you know what? Let's let's do this one. Sorella is Alaras. Now, this one... This one is so true that... <laughs> that, that people kind of don't want to accept it. You know how R plus L equals J became so widely known that people started like hunting for other um, theories, like 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 what we see down here and and, uh, and over here. Well, that's kind of what 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 happened to Sorella is Alaris. It's so obvious that that people are like, well, that can't possibly be true. And uh, yes, it can. Sometimes obvious things are the thing. Sometimes sometimes the thing that appears to be true is true and this is one of those times. I think that's I don't I think the possibility that Sorella isn't Alaras is like so infinitesimally small. It's like I I I, ca- I cannot fathom <laughs> seeking another explanation for this. Um so yeah, I don't really have like I don't really care if 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 she is he or or not. It doesn't really impact me. I'm not gonna lose sleep <laughs> if if it turns out that that it's not. That by that I'm saying that it gets a pretty neutral rating on the love it hate it scale. But it's fucking true. <laughs> it it just is. But why else? Alaras isn't a name. <laughs> you can't just do that. No, I, I, I think that as far as red herrings go, that that's that's too much for Gurm. He wouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, no. Sorella Cer- is Solaris. C- come on. <laughs> um, um, so, I-, I think what I what I must then follow that up with is, and this will be our last one, and this one's a favourite of mine, Sorella Sand is Shay. Um, 
this 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 I I I've gotten I I I've got nothing, man. How do how do you talk about this one? This is insane. Sorella Sand Daughter of Oberyn. Uh, uh, the only unaccounted for Sand Snake at Sunspear, well, not Sun, well, you know, in Dawn. Um, yeah, yeah, no. She's not the person whose name is hers backwards at the Citadel, you know, getting close with the very important, knowledgeable, uh, s- uh, uh, scheming magical player Marwyn doing that for her family no 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 she's a camp follower in she she's a whore she's a camp follower in the riverlands um and are you are you on bath salts this is fucking mental (laughs) sorella sand is shay what are you doing no 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 no. Oh. Stop. Okay. <laughs> um, hang on. Uh, let me just put this where it belongs. <laughs> there, there we go. I know there's more to that. To ch- I mean... There's renditions of this theory that have more going on that are even less palatable than Sorella Sand being Shay, um, but <laughs> I, I I think that that's enough. I think that just making that statement on its own is is enough for me. So yeah, um, that'll do us for today. There's still so many more to get through, and I guess we're we're just gonna have to keep going. Uh, it might be tomorrow, it might be two days from now. I'm gonna have to, I can't do them all on weekends, is what I'm, is what I'm figuring out. So, well, I'll just, this is my life now. I, I stream and I know things. I don't, I don't actually know many things. I'm just giving you my opinions, man. Hopefully they're well-informed opinions, but... Anyway. (laughs) Um... That that'll do us. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think next stream I'm gonna start with a blank slate again, just so it's it doesn't get too crowded. I I think that's probably the way of doing it. Okay, so um, that's us. I'm I'm super hungry now, and I have so many other things to do with my day. So uh, it's been lovely sitting here yammering on at you for for three hours. And uh, <laughs> let's do it again sometime. All right. Thanks so much for checking in. Um, pissed. I, I I work on videos all the time. Um, it I I expect it'll be another two weeks for episode three of season six. Um, then then hopefully shorter wait before episode four. It, it's difficult to gauge how long these are gonna take. Um, you'll have noticed, I'm sure some of you that uh, there's a kind of change in tone. In the piss take series, and that's not like anything to do with me, really. It's because th- the show's issues are different. They're very different to the issues it faces in season seven and eight, you know. Um, so it takes a lot more time and efforted analysis to get into the issues plaguing season six. So. The videos aren't longer because I've become worse at um, getting my point across concisely. In fact, I think I pack more... uh, No, probably not more points. uh, Just more detail into the points than I used to. Um, It's because Season 6 isn't as bad as Season 7 and 8. I mean, it's not just because of that. It's because it's bad in more complex ways it's also good in a lot of ways and i need to address those as well so there you go that that's that's why season six those videos are longer 
uh, and the tone is different. I I hope you still enjoy them. They've been performing so well. It's uh, it's been incredible watching. Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy to be back. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Ah, oh, man. Glimbus out. <laughs>